topics actually. The first topic is going to be about the age of Sayyidah Aisha and as you know um, it's in many books it's written that it is mutawatir. So just to um, revise what uh, scholars said about the age of Sayyidah Aisha when uh, she was engaged before the migration and when she uh, when also was made set of the wedding after the migration. So there is disagreement actually, big disagreement. Uh, not uh, only the contemporary scholars, but even the uh, classical scholars, such as Ibn Hisham, Ibn Ishaq, they do not agree with the narration of uh, Muslim and uh, Bukhar. Anyway, we're going to go through. That's the first thing. And the second is about uh, the Banu Qurayla. Banu Qurayla. So, uh, did Muslims um, uh, uh, finish off all of them or not? Uh, uh, this, uh, the next is um, the matter of the Isnads, of the Isnad, the main Isnad of the book of um, uh, Al-Wasiyya of Abu Hanifa, but if we will have enough time, I want to go through the chains of all of the um, books of Abu Hanifa, just to have an idea, as well as we'll touch upon um, uh, the Asanid of the rest of the books, which is very beneficial. And then two very important topics. One is, where does God live right now? Where is he sitting or standing or whatever he is doing? Where is he right now? And, um, uh, and uh, that is, as you know, the main foundation of uh, the Aqid of the brothers from Salafi background. And the last topic is about Allah sitting on the throne. Uh, so it's not settling as a stewa, but sitting. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, there is a hadith in which Rasulullah actually says that um, uh, Allah is sitting on the throne and there is a gap of you know, empty space in the, on, on top of the throne or on the size of four fingers. On which hadith says that uh, Rasulullah will be setting, I mean, sitting in the uh, day of judgment. Rasulullah say, says in that hadith, which I will be quoting, that uh, uh, Rasulullah actually will be sitting with God, both of them sitting next to each other on the throne. Okay, so anyway, these are the main topics, inshallah. <clears throat> First of all, the age of Sayyidah Aisha, we all know that, mashallah, uh, now the majority of the scholars say that it is mutawatir that Sayyidah Aisha was at the age of six when she was engaged, okay, to Rasulullah and that was uh, about two years before the migration. So after the death of Sayyidah Khadija, after about one year, within one year after the death, means after that migration took place and wedding was after about one year averagely. So in total, there was three years between the engagement and the wedding, okay? Uh, but then wedding in, uh, in uh, uh, Arabic language doesn't mean to have sexual activities. Wedding means when lady moves to her husband's house, new husband's house, means they are starting their family life, family journey. But what about the sexual activities, uh, etc.? It's not included into the wedding, okay? So anyway, uh, as you know, the main um, uh, uh, opinions are um, that it is uh, 6 and 9. Where uh, did it come from? So the first is uh, Imam Bukhara and Imam Muslim together. They did narrate the hadith in which uh, hadith is um, uh, narrated from Sayyidah Aisha, in which he says, تزوجني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنا ابن ست سنين وبنى بي وأنا بنت تسع سنين. Um, uh, means Rasulullah married me, I mean, we were engaged uh, when um, I was six years old and then I did move to his house, means having wedding and uh, uh, living in the same place, um, uh, and I was nine years old. So that is the narration of both of Muslim and uh, Bukhari, but Imam, Musa, uh, Imam, Imam Muslim brings another narration um, in which again it's uh, from Sayyidah Aisha, in which Sayyidah Aisha says uh, uh, Rasulullah actually uh, uh, did get engaged, I mean they, they set up the engagement and she was seven years old. Okay, um, 
uh, but, but in the same time, it says that uh, said Aisha, uh, I mean the uh, marriage, and uh, said Aisha moving to uh, Rasulullah's house, it was when she was nine years old. So only the disagreement in the narrations, in the Bukhari and Muslim narration, it says six years old when engagement took place. But in the different narration in which Imam Muslim narrates by himself, uh, hadith says that Sayyidah Aisha was seven years old. Both of the narrations from, uh, from Sayyidah Aisha. Okay, and chain of that is authentic. And the scholars uh, who said, I mean, who um, uh, 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 tried to um, uh, give interpretation, they said that Sayyidah Aisha was above six years. Six years and a few months. And for that age, it's uh, uh, permissible to be told six as well as seven. Okay, so that is one proof that um, um, uh, said Aisha was six years old when uh, engagement took place. That's the first proof. As well as the second uh, thing, the second issue, we do know that Sayyid Aisha passed away uh, when she was 63 years old. Okay, we do have some authentic narrations on that. As well as uh, when exactly it was. It was on uh, 57th of Hijrah. Please, can anyone help us with calculation, please? So, if uh, it was uh, 57th of Hijrah and say that Aisha was 63 years old. So then, when, uh, so before how many years, say the, uh, uh, before, how many years before the migration, uh, say that Aisha was born, please? Can you help me? Yes, greatest mathematician, please. Six years. Six years before the... Um, uh, so it was uh, 57 Hijri, yeah, and say the Aisha was 67, 63, sorry, 63. So how many years? It's eight years, am I right? Eight years? Or six years. Okay, so in that case, if you just uh, so even the calculation is going to be a bit less than what is in the narration of Bukhari Muslim Amara. Right? So six uh, years before the Hijrah means if we take it um, literally. So it will be that, because Sayyid Aisha, she has been engaged to Rasulullah before two years before migration. Okay? And Sayyid Aisha was born six years before the migration, before the Hijrah. Means what was the age of Sayyid Aisha? According to this narration. Four. Four. Because she's four born years. six years four. before. Four, 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 four. So thank you. Yeah. So, the uh, numbers are here. 57th of Hijri, Sayyid Aisha passed away. Okay, and she was um, 63 years old. 63 years old. 63 years old. Means, uh, so that is the Hijra, year of Hijra. So then when Sayyid Aisha was born before the Hijra, we say, six years before the Hijrah. Am I right? And we know that uh, Rasulullah married her after the death of Sayyidah Khadija within about one year. And after two years, Rasulullah migrated. Am I right? So then, um, uh, take off two years, which is uh, uh, two years before the migration, okay? And then it will end up of being four years old. Means, the actual, according to this narration, the actual age of Sayyidah Aisha in the time of engagement, okay, was four years old. Okay, but then the, the authors, some of the scholars who follow the opinion that said Aisha was six years old, they follow uh, the calculation. Okay, they say, okay, actually, uh, these six years, because uh, Arabians, when it is um, six and six years and few months, they uh, consider it as six uh, um, uh, six years, but it is actually seven years. Okay, so we uh, add one year, 
as well as in here we do add another one here, you know. So then we'll bring it to be again six years. Okay, but the literal meaning of this narration, let's say that Aisha was four years old when she was engaged to Rasulullah before two years before the migration. Because according to this narration, say that Aisha was born uh, uh, six years before the Hijrah. Okay, means we are, get, we are getting even less than six. Okay, so, so according to the narration of Imam Muslim, she was seven years. According to the narration of Bukhari and Muslim, six years. According to this narration, four years old. Okay? So then scholars actually, they do use some certain way of calculation because Arabians normally when they say, uh, I, I spent, for example, in uh, uh, Saudi one year, so it means one year and few months. Uh, okay, so they follow that way to bring back four to six. That is, uh three calculation variables there, yeah, yeah. and each variable that you mentioned, is that a different hadith, or is that... Yeah, all of them hadith? based on the hadith, in different hadith, not only one. Oh, okay. But I brought all of the hadith just to calculate Could you give us the, the hadith for each uh, I, I, I'm going to leave the references with okay. NDI, inshallah. Yeah. So, so, maybe it will be uploaded, so all of the reference books will be here, inshallah. Okay. Okay. So it's also Sheikh Sahih that she died at the age of 63. So that's yeah. also a, a Sahih. Correct, yeah, yes. That's agreed upon, one of the agreed upon issues actually. And okay. it's also agreed that they got married six years, uh, oh, sorry, the marriage took place in the year of Hijra, did you say? Two or? years, two years before the Hijra. Two years before Hijra. Yeah, yeah, and after the migration, after about within the first year, okay, Rasulullah, uh, she moved to the house of Rasulullah. Oh. And it's also agreed that she was six year, She was born six years before Hijra. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to go through. Ah. So as you can see, there is no agreement. Right. So narration of Bukhari and Muslim that it was six years. She was six years. Hmm. And then Imam Muslim brought another narration from Sayyid Aisha again that she was seven. Hmm. And according to the third narration, it comes out as four. Ah. Uh, so I'm trying to prove that uh, so far we do not have only one uh, hmm. clear cut. Uh, uh, agreed upon narration. So, so, but anyway, it is still the people who believe that uh, Sayyid Asha was engaged to Rasulullah at the age of six, they do use the narration of that calculations. But then they add up, do you know, the bits and bytes to bring them back to be six again. Okay, so they say, e even in English language, so if you will s spend well, one year and three months, for example, in America, what do you say? You will, uh, you will say, I spent uh, one year. Okay. So it is the same way of Arabians, you know. So even if it is, for example, uh, 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 for example, two years and uh, three months, for example, they will say two years. Okay. So that's why they add up the bits and bytes, as I did explain. So to add one year, one year in each of these numbers. So then they just bring it back to be again six. So just to make this narration to accord the narration of six, actually, the narration of Bukhari Muslim. And uh, each uh, hadith that mentions these, these variables yeah. is all uh, authentic, you're saying? Yes, okay. or at least Hassan, still authentic, okay? And again, the third, uh, the fourth uh, narration, it is coming from uh, Abu Nu'im uh, al-Asbahani, it is in Marifatu Sahaba, in the his, his, history book about the Sahaba, that um, uh, Sayyida Asma was born, Sayyida Asma, the uh, sister, early sister of uh, Aisha, radiallahu anha, she was born um, something about um, uh, 10 years before the prophethood of Rasulullah, okay? So now let's uh, agree on one thing. So now I will carry on using before the prophethood, before the prophethood. So that is according to the Asharis. I'm using the Ashari way because um, uh, according to Asharis, uh, say that uh, Rasulullah became prophet at the age of 40. But according to the Maturidis, we say that Rasulullah was prophet even before Adam was created. According to the Ahadith. Okay, once Rasulullah has been asked, when you became prophet, Mata Kunta Nabiyan, so Rasulullah said, Kuntu Nabiyan wa Adam ben al Mani wa Turab. So I've been prophet, okay, even before Adam was created. Okay, so anyway. So when I say before the prophethood of Rasulullah, so that is according to Asharis. Yeah, so I'm maturity. Anyway, 
So say the uh, Asma was born ten years before the prophethood of Rasulullah Okay, um, and there is uh, there is um, again agreed upon uh, opinion or the most reliable opinion, or at least it is according to the uh, uh, nephew of Sayyid Aisha and Asma that uh, the uh, difference between uh, Sayyid Aisha and the age and Sayyid uh, um, uh, Asma is 10 years. Okay, so let's say that um, according to these narrations, Sayyid Aisha uh, was, uh, Sayyid Asma was born uh, uh, 10 years before the Hijra. And then there is a um, uh, uh, agreed upon opinion that the difference between uh, Aisha and Asma 10 years. Means, say that Aisha was born uh, uh, in the first year of the uh, prophethood. 10 years. So that's how it will work. Am I right? Um, so, um, Hazrat Asma was born 10 years before prophethood or before hijra? Before prophethood, sorry. Before prophethood. I'm right. sorry, it is not hijra, it is before prophethood. Right. Uh, I did just mix up because it's coming to be the next uh, issue. But anyway, let's uh, go back to the first three narrations. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, so 7, 6 and 4. But then uh, um, Imam Nawi explained that 7 and 6, there is no any co uh, controversiality. Why? Because uh, say the Aisha actually was uh, 6 years and few months. Okay, when she has been engaged with Rasulullah. So then, for that age, you can say 6 as well as 7. But what about the uh, narration, calculation of say the Aisha being 4 years old? Because she passed away at um, uh, uh, 57th of Hijra and she was uh, 63 years old. So it will end up of being that Sayyid Aisha was born 6 uh, before Hijra. Okay, means when and, uh, Rasulullah was engaged with her 2 years before Hijra. Means her age was 4 years old. But then the same uh, group of scholars they say it's because of the Arabian calculation. So bits and bytes they do not uh, consider it as anything. So then they just bring it back to be again 6 years. Okay. So that is, and the last thing actually, the last thing uh, I would say, the last thing I would say, uh, the same uh, group of brothers uh, uh, say, um, anyone who doesn't go with this one, this uh, 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 opinion, so they are actually criticizing the uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, authenticity of Bukhari and Muslim. Okay, so then how come that uh, the most authentic book after Quran is Bukhari and Muslim? Okay, so if you do not accept it, so then means what you can accept then? Okay, so these are the main things. Um, so for me, uh, it seems a bit uh, strange actually. Um, because uh, mainly it's the Salafi brothers actually they say Salafi brothers actually they say that uh, I mean that the last statement is their statement if you do not accept, if you are ashamed to admit that Rasulullah married some uh, a girl at the age of 6 is, so does it mean that because of you being ashamed that you will criticize Bukhari and Muslim well uh, Sheikh Nasr al-Albani did criticize few ahadith in both of Bukhari and Muslim so then why no one said that um, uh, uh, Albani is uh, 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 doubting on the authenticity of the most authentic book. So the last uh, thing is not acceptable. Am I right? So when we, um, so when of, when some of the scholars disagree with these opinions, so it's not because they are doubting on authenticity of Bukhari and Muslim, but maybe they're comparing it with some other narratives. Anyway, so that is the first position. Yes. Shay, can I t take a diversion? Uh, what's the proof that Bukhari is? the most authentic book after the Quran. Doesn't Quran say that if there's any book from anyone other than Allah, yeah, it yeah. will have many mistakes. So yes, doesn't that mean Bukhari is from not from Allah? It's just oh, like okay. it, it man's sense Because the it, Bukhari has been narrated by people. Mm. Okay, so um, uh, the meaning of Bukhari being most authentic after uh, 
um, uh, Quran because of uh, the conditions of Imam Bukhari to accept or to not to accept the Ahadith. So he was very strict. So it's because of the meaning of that is because of that. Or otherwise, there are there are many controversialities within the Ahadith of Bukhari uh, in, in itself. Okay, but anyway, it is going to be inshallah in in the topic of the. Uh, um, chains of the books of Abu Hanifa because we need to include the Bukhari's books also. Inshallah, we'll talk about it then. Now, the second category of uh, uh, scholars they say um, if you just uh, bring all of the uh, narrations uh, on the table, so then you have to admit that uh, the age of Sayyidah Aisha at least, at least has to be something between uh, 18 to 24 within that age in the year of engagement. When uh, and and after three years, they were uh, actually, they did live together. Okay, so let's revise the uh, narrations, which makes us to think that she was something about 18 or 24. Yes, what's the question? Um, where does nine come into? Sorry? Nine. Nine, uh, so because... They were, they were married at nine. Is the same? No, 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 no. They are, okay, being married, I meant uh, they, them living in the same place. Right. So at the age of six, they were engaged. Okay. But they didn't live together till after the immigration, uh, after one year after the immigration. Okay, but some of the, um, uh, from what I've heard, the narration, they say that they were engaged at six. Six, yes, and yes. And married at nine. Yeah, yeah. So ma marriage, bana aleha. Bana aleha means, we can say as marriage, but bana aleha means living in the same house. So say that Aisha moving to live with Rasulullah What I want to basically the consummate. No, no, no. That's that what I said in the beginning. Right. So living together or marrying doesn't mean having sexual intercourse. But right. uh, moving, say that Aisha moving to her husband's house. At 18, then they have consummate. No, no. Now 18 doesn't have any anything. Okay. Sorry. So you did mix up once. Yeah. So according to the narration of Imam Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, before two years, before two years, before the migration, they were engaged, offering except witnesses, mahad, etc. Okay, and after three years, after that, plus three years, after the migration, after one year, say the Aisha moved into the uh, house of Rasulullah Did you understand? So, in this narration of Bukhari and Muslim, there is no anything to do with number eighteen, with age of eighteen. Mm. So now I did finish all of these narrations. Now I'm going to the opposite position in which they say, say the Aisha, when Rasulullah married her, it, she wasn't six, but she was between 18 to 24. Now where are the proofs? Now I'm going to mention the proofs of the second group. Uh, when you say married, you mean living together? No, no, offer and accept, engagement. So, what uh, first group says six, now the second group say between 18 to 24. Okay, and then what the first group say nine, so then you have to add up another three years according to the second group. Did you understand? I question. So, for example, you know, what the first group said, yeah. they got engaged at six, they got married at nine, and nine doesn't mean that they actually she she moved, moved in. in. No, when that, that was, that's what it means. Yeah, so I mean she did move it. in. But in terms of sexual activity, it's nothing to do with a wife moving into the husband's house, you know? So that, what, does, what does that group say about that? Where went that? Yeah, is, is, is there, there is nothing, right. so, nothing mentioned in any of the two groups. So just to clarify, just <coughs> it's from me. Clarification that Bana Aleha in Arabic language does mean the sexual activity. But it means that she did move into the husband's house. At what, yes. age, at what age? Nine. 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 According to the first narration. According to the first First group. group. First this group. group. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sheikh, this is very important that the Arabic phrase doesn't mean sexual relations yeah, because yeah. what the majority of people say when this question is asked yeah, Muslims, yeah. Yeah, they say they were married at six or yeah. engaged, they might yeah, yeah. change these words around yeah, yeah. and then they say the marriage was consummated at nine. No, so no. you know like that gives more like implication of like okay, actual yeah. physical relationship okay, as okay. opposed to you know like wife moves into the house maybe yeah, yeah. it might be years you know so. Yeah, yeah. So the word doesn't mean consummated, well, it just means... No. Yeah. Well, she, um, so the word is said, just a moment, sorry. in Arabic language it says... Bana aleha means bana is coming from building. Building on her means 
in terms of her moving into the Rasulullah house, it was at the age of nine. Please go to the uh, dictionary, okay, mm -hmm. Arabic, English dictionaries, any, any of them, and uh, check the, um, uh, the root of the word of Bina. Bina is building. So, okay, so when a wife moves into the uh, husband's house after the engagement or after offering itself, they call bana alayha, means they, uh, she did move into his house. So, Sheikh, what would be in uh, the kind of language that Bukhari and the classical scholars, uh, classical Arabic, what would be the phrase they would use for sexual relations so we can see the difference? Like, you know, definitely to have physical contact. That is sexual intercourse. And is that word in Bukhari, Muslim, anywhere about at nine they had jima or sexual intercourse or anything like this? Uh, is not mentioned. Aisha, said Aisha says we did have this and after that we took a ghusl from the same joke. Yeah, at the age of nine? No, no, no. No, no mention. No, no, no. no, no, no. I, I'm giving, I'm quoting from the hadith in which uh, they are talking about the sexual intercourse, they're using this word. Uh, so, and it's not used for when she moved in at nine? No, no, Th this means uh, moved in, but so, this one, uh, but it's two separate things, you know. Okay, so, check when, but when? This one, Jima, is not mentioned in the narration of uh, uh, Sayyid Asha moving in. So when we in Dawah we say they consummated the marriage at nine, That's it's an assumption, there's no proof. Consummating is sexual intercourse. Yeah, you basically. Well, uh, what did you get? It's not from this word, you know? Sure. This word means, uh, uh, because husband is responsible to provide the bina, to, to provide the uh, uh, property for the wife to live. So that's what it means. Uh, it so in. even the first group yeah. um, does not mean that the marriage was consummated at night. It is agreed upon opinion that this word never means. So, yeah, so even, the, even the people that believe that yeah, yeah. she was engaged at six yeah, yeah. and married at nine, nine. The, don't they say, believe that there was consummation. No, no, because uh, it's, it's not in the hadith. Yeah. In the but, hadith. But doesn't, that, it, doesn't it normally apply when you get married? That's what happens. Well, not in Arabic, isn't it? It's different. No, no. no bana alayha, it does mean. No, yeah, it is something like uh, you can say natural thing for you. If you will marry, so uh, we as uh, Asians, we have to do it in the first night. And even there are some cultures which is not very good. So they have to show the blood also, yeah, you know, yeah. which is very, very bad. According to Islam, it's very, very bad. Yes. Because you're disclosing what yeah. your wife is, you know. Mm -hmm. And that is considered as uh, the youth, you know, the youth, the meaning of the youth, who doesn't have jealousy about his wife, you know, yeah. to describe her private things, you know. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that one. Bana Aleha means they, she did move into his house and they're living together, actually. Was she um, physically mature at nine? Uh, it's uh, another good question, but normally we say the maturity age will start from the uh, age of nine. Okay, but then there is narration in which uh, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq actually asks, okay, according to this one, to this opinion, yeah. that uh, in terms of uh, she uh, breaching and uh, uh, bleeding, you know, and then after that she has been sent according to this uh, uh, position that she did move into the. Uh, husband's house. So she was physically mature? Yes, correct, yes. According to this group? No, it's a, there is narration. They do yeah. quote this uh, group, quote that hadith that Abu Bakr Siddiq asked his wife, yeah. what did she start bleeding, yeah. etc. And then she replied yes, so then actually they brought it as like uh, to live uh, with, the, with the husband. So that hadith about bleeding is linked to the moving? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because, because now she became mature and now it's the husband's responsibility to maintain and to give, to provide property right. and food and etc. Okay. So that's the meaning of banale. But okay. the thing that you're talking about, sexual intercourse, is jima. Okay. okay. And sometimes they may use the word of khala biha. Khala biha. Means it's coming from the root of khalwa. Khalwa is to stay alone. So for example, you will say, uh, my brother married some lady, and after that, they spent alone together. Okay, so that's the, another word. Okay, and another word could be, dakhala biha. Dakhala biha. Dakhala biha means, he went into the uh, isolated place with her. And again, the, this word not necessarily means the sexual intercourse. 
Okay? Because even in Hanafi Madhab, we say that let's suppose that I married some lady and then I did this. Okay, so we spent half an hour in isolated place and after that I divorced my wife and I came out and I said in front of the judge that I didn't have any sex. Okay, so then judge will accept what I said because this doesn't mean the sexual act, but only to be in one room yeah, I, 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 alone, on our own, you know? So that is the first narration, I mean first opinion. Okay, so now the second group, as I said, the second group they say, when you compare all of the narrations, you cannot uh, accept that she was uh, four or six or seven years old where there was uh, uh, engagement. But actually, if you go through the narrations, so it should be something between 18, 1, 8, up to uh, 23, 24 years old. That's engagement. Okay, what first group says, six. So they say between um, 18 to 24. So now, let's revise the proofs of the second group. Um, so as you know, uh, there is a book, um, There is a book of Ibn Hisham, okay, so it's one of the most uh, uh, classical books in terms of the biography. As well as there is another book of the Tarikh of Tabari. So then two scholars, they say in terms of when exactly say the Aisha was born. So they say, Wulidat Aisha tu qabla al-Islam fi asri al So say the Aisha was born before Islam. What's the meaning of before Islam? Before Rasulullah started the mission, fi asr al in the jahili century, in the jahili century. So, if you, so, um, so means at least, at least, to admit it, at least she has to be one year old, at least, when Islam came. For uh, Tabari and Ibn Hisham to say that um, she was born in the jahiliya time. Am I right? As a minimum. So this is uh, Ibn Hisham and Tabari. Ibn, bo both, both. So they contradict the, the Bukhari? No, definitely. So the yeah. first narration, at least uh, one year before Hijrah, um, uh, before the prophethood. Am I right? Means something about uh, 13 years before Hijrah. Because Rasulullah spent something about 13 years in Mecca, and then migration, and 10 years in Medina. Am I right? So anyway, before 13 years before Hijrah means at least say that Aisha had to be one year old when, so for uh, Tabari and Ibn Hisham to say that she was born in the time of Jahiliya means as minimum, as a minimum the age of say that Aisha can be at least about 11 years when Rasulullah was engaged, am I right? why? because two years before the migration and say that Aisha was born one year before the pro uh, prophethood in the time of Jahiliya so that will be something about 11, 12 years. Okay? But that we are taking as a minimum. But as a maximum, it could be even 10, 11 years before. Because the most important thing in here is that she was born in the time of Jahiliya. So, as a minimum, one year old when Rasulullah started the mission. Or it could be more. But we are going with the worst case. Okay? So, that's the one proof. <clears throat> the next is. Sirat ibn Hisham, again ibn Hisham is a famous person, okay, so anyone who narrates anything about the biography, so mainly they do go through ibn Hisham, because ibn Hisham is the a narrator of ibn Ishaq, and ibn Ishaq is only the main uh, Sira scholar. So what does he say? So um, ibn Hisham was uh, counting the, um, uh, the first earliest uh, generation of the Muslims, Sabiqun, what we call as Sabiqun. What's the meaning of Sabiqun? Anyone who became Muslim before Umar, radiallahu anhu. Okay? So then Ibn Hisham says, so he uh, starts uh, 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 counting, so it is Abu Bakr Siddiq, okay, and uh, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, and all of them, as well as uh, Sa'id ibn Zaid, okay, as well as his wife, Fatima bint, uh, Fatima bint al Khattab, the uh, sister of uh, Umar al Khattab, radiallahu anhu. Uh, uh, and then he says, Asma bint Abi Bakr, wa Aisha bint Abi Bakr. Then he says, wa hey, you made So one of the early Muslims means who became Muslim within the first three years is Sayyidah Asma and Sayyidah Aisha. Now, uh, 
And then he says, Ibn Hisham says, Wahiya Yawma Izin Sagira. Aisha, when she became Muslim, she was young. Now my question. So let's take uh, that she was six years old when Rasulullah married her, and that was two years before the Hijrah. Means, according to this narration, when in, within the first three years of the prophethood, how, what was the age of Sayyidah Aisha? But she wouldn't have been born according to that, would she? She was not born yet. In the best scenario, uh, her mother, Umm Ruman, will be pregnant by her. Okay? Means this does match with that. Even Hisham's opinion and narration does match with this narration. So let's be more uh, specific. Uh, so, um, according to uh, the Bukhari and Muslims narration, uh, let's say that uh, uh, Rasulullah Islam spent 11 years, 11 years uh, after the age of 40. So at the age of 51, Rasulullah Islam married her. Amarat, and after three years, she did move into his house. Means there is 11 years, 11 years of the uh, prophethood before he married her. And after 11 years of prophethood, she was only six years old. Means to classify, to classify that uh, within the first three years, she, uh, she was a Muslim according to the Ibn Hisham. So let's say that she became Muslim at the end of third year, just to help out, the, help out this group. So then, at the end of third year, what was the age of Sayyidah Aisha? It was two years before she was born. Am I right? What do you think? Yeah, it doesn't add up. So, so two years before she was born, am I right? Means, uh, according to the, to the narration of Ibn Hisham, she has to be at least, please can you give me some number? to say that someone became Muslim and he was young. How, much, how old does he have to be? So Breastfeeding baby, can we say that he became Muslim? Age of three, four. At the age of three and four, according to both of Maturid and Ashari, uh, Shahada, witnessing, testimony of Islam is not accepted. Only Abu Hanif and Maturid, they accept the uh, testimony of the person who is not yet mature, but something about one year is remaining to be mature. So, the minimum age of the maturity of the girls, according to the maturities, is six. Means, in the worst scenario, she had to be, for Ibn Hisham to say that she became Muslim and she was young, she had to be five years old. And then, at 11 years of prophethood, so it will end up of being 16 years. So in here is not 18 years. It's 16 years as a minimum, according to Ibn Hisham. Am I right? But we are trying to help out this group. Or otherwise, she was yet young. It could mean she was 12. Do we say for 12-year-old uh, 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 girl, she was young, 12 years old? Of course. So it could be too, but we are going just to help out this group. So we are taking the minimum uh, possible age, which is five. Okay, so according to Ibn Hisham, so that book comes up. As well as, as well as, um, Ibn Hisham and Tobari are not only the people who say that, uh, so Ibn Hisham is not the person who says that Sayyidina Aisha was one of the earliest Muslims the meaning of earliest Muslim, who became Muslim within the first three years, okay? But uh, Al-Mutahir bin Tahir, or Al-Mutahir bin Tahir, it is um, uh, a scholar of Siran, scholar of Hadith, who passed away at fourth century, 355th. Uh, he also says that Sayyidah Aisha was one of the earliest uh, Muslims. Okay, and he says, so then he says, even, he clarifies, uh, before, carry, carries on, saying, فَكَانَ إِسْلَامُ هَؤُلَاءِ فِي ثَلَاثِ سِنِينَ وَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ يَدْعُوا فِي خُفْيَةٍ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَدْخُلَ دَارَ أَرْقَمْ بِنْ إِبْنَا أَبِي الْأَرْقَمْ So the first, if you remember, in the first, after the latest stage, in the third year, after the, the prophethood, Rasulullah did set up the first institute, the house of Arqam na Abi Arqam. So, um, um, 
الحافظ مطهر بن طاهر المقدسي says that سيدة عائشة became Muslim even before رسول الله صلى الله did go into the house of أرقم لعند الأرقم okay and the third scholar who says it is أبو القاسم السهالي who was born at 508 so he also says that سيدة عائشة became Muslim in the actually first year of the prophethood because in here I was helping out, you know, saying that at the third year. But Suhaili, Abu Bakr, Abu Qasim Suhaili says that in the first year, actually. Means we have to add up in here two more years, you know. Two more years for, the, for it to become 18 years. Okay, so that is, the, um, that is the thing. So it is in terms of when she was born, Tobari, as well as Ibn Hisham, both say that in the time of Jahiliya, and when she became Muslim, so uh, Ibn Hisham, as well as Suhaili, as well as Al Hafid al Maqdisi, three of them, they said that she became Muslim as Sabiqat within the first three years, but further, uh, Suhaili says that in the first year, not within the first three years, but in the first ever year. Okay, so it is two years before Umar. So, the numbers are getting very strange, actually. I don't know. So, Sheikh, um, uh, this is very interesting, but what will you, what, what would someone, for example, a lot of people, yeah. like, say, ordinary people, will just say, well, we just ignore Ibn Hisham because Bukhari is more accurate. No, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not that, it's not that, because uh, Ibn Hisham is actually the main narrator of uh, Ibn Ishaq, and no one did say that Ibn Hisham is a liar or weak. Everyone agrees that his book is authentic. So after agreeing that both of Bukhari and uh, Ibn Hisham are authentic, so then why uh, we should go to the extension to just ignore the narration, you know? Okay. And it's not only the things, but even the next is going to be the uh, quotation from Bukhari and Muslim about the age, which would support the second group actually. Okay. So now the next uh, uh, interesting uh, incident. It is the incident incident of. Badr, Ghazwatul Badr. So, uh, Ghazwatul Badr, it was um, uh, 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 the first year after the migration. Am I right? So, it is exactly the year in which Rasulullah said Aisha did move into the house of Rasulullah. Means she will be at the age of nine. Nine. Am I right? Same year. And then, uh, Said Aisha did narrate the uh, story of uh, how Badr happened. So in that, she says very strange statement. So she says that one of the people actually, when Rasulullah, mm. we went with Rasulullah wasalam, she says I was there also. Then some of the uh, disbelievers came. Okay, disbelievers came, and then he said, "Oh Muhammad, I want to follow you to fight against the Qurayshis." Okay, so then Rasulullah said. I uh, do you take a uh, witnessing that there is no God except one and I am prophet the person said no but I want to fight Rasulullah said we will not uh, seek uh, protection from you against Qurayshis okay so then he says in that uh, hadith she says Qalab said Aisha is saying ثُمَّ مَضَى حَتَّى إِذَا كُنَّا عِنْدَ الشَّجَرَ أَدْرَكَهُ الرَّجُلُ so after the first meeting with that person, we carried on, and when we went next to the tree, okay, so next to the tree, the same person came again, and then he did make the same offer, and then Rasul asked, asked the same question, okay, and then the same conversation took. So in here, uh, uh, Sayyid Aisha says, "Hatta إذا كنا عند الشجرة أو بالشجرة." So when we were means Sayyid Aisha was there. So then. It is narration of Imam Muslim. So then Imam Nawawi explains that Sayyida Aisha was not one of those who actually went to the Badr. But actually she went to actually, um, uh, as you can say, to say just with her. Did you understand? Just to, you can say, take them uh, to their uh, destination. I mean, wherever they are going. Okay. But anyway, from this hadith, it shows that between the first meeting and the second meeting, there was quite a bit journey. Okay, and normally people wouldn't go except if they would be part of the army. And at the age of nine, Rasulullah wouldn't allow anyone to go to uh, 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 get engaged into the battle. Okay, 
But the second uh, incident is even more clearer. It is the ba Battle of Uhud, in which the Aisha, according to the first opinion, would be only 10 years old. Am I right? So what happened? And Anas, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, لما كان يوم أحد انهزم الناس عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولقد رأيت عائشة بنت أبي بكر وأم سليم وإنهما لمشمرتان أرى خدم سوقهم and then he says so anyway Anas رضي الله عنه says when people were actually do you know that a problem happened in the in the أحد so then people just uh, has been killed around Rasulullah So then Anas radiallahu anhu says, so I saw Sayyidah Aisha and Umm Sulaim, okay, and they did roll up their clothes and they were going and treating the uh, ill people, injured people. Means 100% in here is not a twistable. So maybe with a butter you can do some certain thing, you know, but in here, non twistable. That she took a share in the Ghazwat Uhud. And what, was, what is the age uh, uh, in which Rasulullah did allow the people to get engaged into the battle? Uh, into the battle? What do you think? Wasn't there some boys who wanted to be involved and they were like, mm. I think 14 or something? Excellent, yes. Yeah. So that was the same. It is in the same uh, incident. It is Uhud. So uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu says, um, uh, so he, Ibn Umar was 14 years old. Okay? And she want, he wanted to go to uh, the ba battle. Rasulullah said that you are too young. But in the next year, at the, when he was uh, 15 years old, Rasulullah did allow him. Okay, so according to this hadith, the minimum age in which Rasulullah will allow anyone to get engaged to uh, share, take share any uh, to, to take a share in the in the battle is 15 years. Yes. What if they say that she was just there like to do nursing, not... No, no, that is, that is the meaning of taking share. Like, mm -hmm. Even Ibn Umar wouldn't go to fight, but he would go to collect the arrows and to help out, you know? Oh. Okay, so uh, the, the young people, that's what they would, they would do. Okay, so that is uh, another proof. So according to this, narration means at least say the Aisha is supposed, supposed to be 15 years as a minimum. Okay, means, but according to the first, first opinion, she will be at the age of 10 only. Okay, so, but according to this narration, uh, so then age of Sayyidah Aisha will be 5 years more. Means, she was 11 years when she was uh, engaged, okay, and she was 14 years when she did move into the house of Rasulullah Okay, so it is actually uh, another strange uh, fact. The next one, actually, also they quote, the second group quote, that... Um, uh, uh, Imam Bukhari radiallahu anhu narrates some hadith in which uh, um, it is in uh, uh, the chapter the, the narration of the Uhud is again from Bukhari and this one is also from Bukhari in which uh, Sayyidah Aisha says لَقَدْ أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِمَكَّةٍ وَإِنِّي لَجَارِيَةٌ أَلْعَبْ بَلِ السَّاعَةُ مُوْعِدُهُمْ وَالسَّاعَةُ أَدْهَا وَأَمَرْ uh, Bukhari narrates in the chapter of Tafsir that um, uh, said Aisha says, Allah revealed the following ayah. What is the ayah? Bal is sa'atu mu'iduhum wa sa'atu adha wa amar. It is Surah Al Qamar. One ayah of Surah Al Qamar. Said Aisha says, this, when this ayah has been revealed in Mecca, I used to be young girl playing. Okay? So now, when exactly uh, Surah Al Qamar has been revealed? So Imam uh, Suyuti narrates hadith from uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu in which um, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu uh, 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 gives the order of the revelation of the surahs. Okay? So in that uh, narration, uh, Ibn Umar mentions both of uh, all of the Surah Al-Fatiha, Iqra, Ya'ayuh al al Muddathir, as well as Qamar, as well as Surah Al-Kahf. Okay? And in terms of uh, uh, we know that Surah Al-Kahf has been revealed before the first migration to the Habasha Amara, to the Ethiopia. And the migration to Ethiopia, it was the fifth year after the prophethood. Means Surah Al-Qamar was revealed before Surah Al-Kahf. 
between Surah Al-Qamar and Kahf, there was 33 surahs that Ibn Abbas mentioned revealed in between, you know? Okay, so, according to this narration, uh, what should be the age of Sayyidah Aisha? Means, at the uh, year 5th of the prophethood, there was migration to the Ethiopia, but Kahf revealed before that, okay? And then Surah Al-Qamar has been sent down before even Surah al and there was 33 another surahs between Qamar and Kaf. So at least let's, in the best situation, it was a third year of the prophethood. Sayyidah Aisha says, I used to be a girl playing when it has been revealed. So what will be the age when this surah, so the third of the prophethood, the third year of prophethood, what will be the uh, age of Sayyidah Aisha? She if she would be a uh, girl playing. She should be at least uh, a toddler, like she should at least be able to like play, play. With, yeah, play. Which is? Uh, maybe six. Five, five, six, five, six, seven, six. even eight, you know. So let's say five, okay? And that was uh, the year three. Hmm. So means, uh, and then after that, after about nine years, Rasulullah Islam married her. So what would be the age of uh, Sayyidina Aisha then? Eighteen again. Twelve. So when brothers uh, say here 6, so according to this narration will be 12. Okay, so maybe this narration is very, very matchable with what Tabari and Ibn Hisham said, that she was born in the Jahiliya. Because uh, uh, year 3 after the, pro after the prophethood, she was 6. Means she was born in Jahiliya time. So the, the first group uh, focuses on the engagement. The second group focuses on... Oh, oh, oh. Events, events. No, not the marriage. Not the. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm giving different events which happened, just to find out what was the age of Sayyidina Aisha. So the first event I gave, then quotation from Tabari and Ibn Hisham, when, when exactly she was born. So basically, the main thing is that it's agreed upon that one year before they were engaged, and no. two years afterwards they were married, and now all the events are determining what the age was. But the 16 and 24. That's to do with their marriage, this range. Yeah, yeah. So, so like sixteen twenty-four. Yeah, yeah. To do because the first yeah, group. So, so now I'm giving different narrations, which says that she supposed to be between sixteen to twenty-four. But married or engaged? The engagement. This one. Okay, but I thought that the second group has that doesn't agree with the six engagement. And that's what they both. They both, they both agree on the six of engagement. No, no, no. no. Both, they both agree that the engagement occurred one year before Hijra and they married two years after. Okay. But now with all these events determined that at that time what were age was. Okay. So, so the first look, generation the determined year, six and the second is one year. So, uh, look, now, uh, so there are three narrations uh, of the first group that is about engagement. But when uh, she did move in, she was nine years old. But what about the second group say? So, so far we get so many narrations and according to some, she was something about 16. What they say is 764, according to the second uh, group, it is uh, 16 or 18, okay, and so on. But what about uh, the uh, Sayyidah Aisha moving into the house of Rasulullah after three years, after these days? So, that on the right is engaged. Engagement, yes. Yeah. So, I'm giving different narrations when you calculate them, her age supposed to be like this, you know? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, that this one on the right, yeah, yeah. that the, the marriage date is very, it's different from that one. No, it's exactly. This is nine. Yeah. This is? No, nine. No, no, the mar that, the mar nine is in marriage. She, she Moving in. To the prophet's house. So this side doesn't actually say when they got married. No, everyone agrees it's three years after the yeah, engagement yeah. Yeah, yeah. is marriage. So if the engagement was at, like, let's say randomly nine, yeah. then the marriage would be 12. If it was six, then it would be nine. If it's 18, 21. Like, so everyone agrees it's three years. Yeah. Right? yeah. Three years after the engagement. Yeah. But the question is, when did they get engaged? Yeah. yeah. So now, uh, so the first thing I gave you in terms of when Sayyidina Aisha exactly was born. Tabari and Ibn Hisham said in the Jahiliya. Okay, and the second question was uh, Ibn Hisham and Suhaili and Maqdisi, all of them, they say that Sayyidah Aisha one of the earliest Muslims. As well as Maqdisi says that she became Muslim in the first year of the prophethood. Okay, and after that, uh, I did quote that uh, Sayyidah Aisha was in the Badr. 
and then I give you narration. But then uh, Imam Nawi gave some certain interpretation. But then I did quote from uh, uh, Imam Bukhari again that say that Aisha was in Uhud as a soldier. Okay? And then agreed upon opinion that Rasulullah didn't allow anyone under the age of 15. Means she's supposed to be 15 or more. Okay? And then after that, I gave you now, right now, I give, I'm giving you that uh, say that Aisha says, in, it is in Sahih al-Bukhari, that when Surah al-Qamar has been revealed, she used to play with the girls. She was a young girl playing. Okay, and then when exactly Surah al-Qamar was revealed, so it is uh, 30, uh, uh, fourth Surah before Surah al-Kahf. And when Surah al-Kahf has been revealed, it is before the first migration to Ethiopia. And when first migration to Ethiopia took place, it is fifth of the prophethood. Okay, means between uh, Surah al-Kahf, or between uh, migration to Ethiopia and uh, revelation of Qamar, they supposed to be as a minimum two years. So, two years before means uh, third year of the prophethood. And then for her to say, I used to be a girl, little girl playing. So she means, uh, and we cannot say three or four, because she will not understand the revelation, you know. So she knew the ayah which has been revealed. Okay, means... She was something about five, six as a minimum. Means at the year three of the prophethood, means she was six, means she was born uh, three years as a minimum uh, before the prophethood, Me which fits in with the, uh, uh, with Tabar and Ibn Hisham when they say that um, uh, she was born in Jahiliya time. So it is a bit strange actually. Mm -hmm. It is going very strange direction. So, the, uh, so, every, so everybody yeah. believes that they were married three years after the engagement. <laughs> yeah. The second thing that they all agree on. Yeah. What's the second thing that they already already agree on? There's there's two things that they already agree on. That there was ten years between Asma and Aisha. Ten years. Between Asma and Aisha. <laughs> no, it's okay. Anyway, inshallah, I'm going to leave all of the references uh, for MDI because it's really nice to know. And that that's two things they agree on. That's it. No. Two things. These are uh, axiomatic. They, yes, they yes, are correct, yes. on these two things. Correct, yes. And they build upon what they have. Exactly, yeah. So then even in terms of the narration between Bukhari and Muslim, there is one year difference, isn't it? That in, in the hadith in which both of Bukhari and Muslim narrated, Sayyid Asha says, I was six. And then Imam Muslim brought another narration in which he says, actually, I was seven years old when uh, I was engaged to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, and then I brought another thing in terms of the date of death of Sayyid Aisha, and it came out to be four years old. So these are three main proofs of the brothers who say that Sayyid Aisha was six years old when she was engaged, and nine years old when she did move to the uh, place of Rasulullah. So um, what I get from the check is that just because uh, someone reaches uh, uh, puberty, it doesn't mean you can consummate the marriage. No, no, there's nothing like that. But a uh, wife moves in to the husband's house as soon as she becomes uh, uh, mature because now husband is responsible to maintain her property, food, clothes, and other things, you know? So, it, so what about these scholars that say that you can marry a girl as soon as she reaches puberty at nine years old? Yeah. Well, what's the, what's the, I think, uh, the we, uh, I think it's one of our topics. On it's a, it's a, yeah, it's going to be covered yeah, later okay. because, because it's, I need it's a separate. Time, yeah. you know, oh, I thought to we, explain I everything. Thought we finished. No, no, no. no, 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 no. More. Yet we are going with the proofs of the second group. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yet we are speaking. Yet we are. Sheikh, what if someone says, um, if Ibn Hisham, uh, you know, why didn't he say directly what is her age at marriage? This is just, uh, you are deriving this. But he didn't say she was, he just said when she's born. He didn't mention anything about she married at this age. So people might say, well, this is indirect. Indirect? No, okay, okay, it makes sense for me. But. Um, it's all indirect. Exactly, no. Even for example, you go with uh, any other marriage cases, so not all the time mentioned the age of the uh, people. When the, so I think it does make sense. Why? Because the most important thing is the facts and evidences. Hmm. Okay? So it could be that, um, uh, uh, for example, it could be that uh, 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 Sayyidah Aisha will say that, uh, and the most important thing right now, uh, the. Um, uh, dates in the time of, uh, uh, in that age, it didn't used to be known 
by years, you know? There was not years, but they used to know by uh, the incidents, you know? Right, yeah. For example, Rasul Islam was born uh, in the year of fear or after the year of fear. Do, do, you know, do you understand what I mean? Okay, so, uh, so that's why, uh, for me, it makes sense more to not to clarify the year, but they would say I was born maybe before the prophethood or after something like that. But anyway, um, uh, your question would be valid as to argue means all of these uh, narrations which we are bringing more than five, six different narrations, you have to ignore them all only because uh, of Sayyidah Aisha saying that I was six and in different narrations seven. Uh, do you understand what I mean? But yet, uh, your question is maybe uh, strong as to debate. Because I know in uh, Dawa, sadly, this has come up between Muslims, yeah. and they say, look, all of this is debatable. I have a statement from Aisha, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to listen to Aisha, finish. Oh, okay. And if you can't prove to me that, uh, is it Hisham bin Urwa, the guy who narrated it? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you can't prove to me this is wrong, yeah. I don't care about even if you bring hundred. I don't think their method no, is correct. That's what I'm but, trying to say. Yeah. So in debate, your point will be very strong. Mm. But facts are not avoidable. Mm. Uh, do you understand? I mean, because uh, is, is there any um, um, uh, any guarantee that the narration of say the Aisha is saved hundred percent? Because well, even Imam Bukhari, I mean, even for example, Albani did criticize few hadith of the Bukhari. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, so then if he can criticize, so then why is not possible that one will have um, facts to say that there was some misunderstanding in the narration? Do you understand what I mean? Because there is not any guarantee. Well, but, but, uh, uh, that's a very, uh, very good point actually, because it goes bigger, you know, like, w because most of the people in, yeah. in this country, in my experience, especially in Dawa, even the Dawa carriers, they take Bukhari to be, they don't say, but effectively like Quran. So okay. if, a, if a person, an atheist or a Christian apologist says anything about Bukhari, yeah. they will say, assume that 100% yeah. this happened. So treating Bukhari like everything is mutawatir. Yeah, they but don't but say there like there this. Is not mutawatir. Okay, so there is another thing, for example, there is hadith, it is again in Bukhari. Uh, uh, one of the Sahaba said, so Rasulullah left two of the Sahaba and they were in the journey. And everyone slept except two of them. So then one of them said, okay, look, let's do this. I will take care of the first half of the night, you take care of the next. So they agreed, so the second Sahabi uh, slept and the first one started praying. Okay? And then some of the um, uh, people, enemies came and then they said, if everyone is sleeping, so we can kill them all. But then they saw the Sahabi who was praying. So he, they said, let's kill him first and then we'll finish off the rest. So then they shot him. Okay, but in the hadith it says that uh, uh, it actually uh, uh, came to uh, that uh, uh, Sahabi and he started bleeding. Okay, but then he carried on praying and then uh, when uh, disbelievers saw it, they were afraid and they did run away. Okay, so then the second Sahabi, when he woke up, actually he saw the Sahabi bleeding. He said, why you didn't wake me up? So he said, because I was very greedy for me and for you. I was greedy because I wanted to finish off my work and I was greedy for you because I wanted you to relax. So then they did narrate it to Rasulullah so Rasulullah did um, pray. I mean, he made dua for that Sahabi who did this. So then Ibn Hajar said, it is very strange actually because uh, how Rasulullah would allow, I'm sorry, uh, um, uh, uh, Badr Din Aini says, how Rasulullah would allow the Sahabi to pray with the filth because blood would be there. So he said, even if it's in Bukhari, it is strange hadith. Uh, that makes sense. But chain is golden. I mean, chain is not uh, untouchable, actually. Anyway, so we say uh, these are the, actually, uh, facts. But um, one of them being direct and one of them being indirect. So the most important thing is the facts, as well as the uh, uh, possibility of any of the narrations being um, uh, um, uh, uh, mistake, it is still there. Anyway, let's revise the rest of, uh, the rest of them to, uh, uh, to see what uh, are the proofs of them. So, the next uh, proof that is uh, given from the, um, from the uh, second group, so that is agreed upon, as, as I said, that there is 10 years between Sayyidah Asma and Sayyidah um, Aisha. Okay. Uh, now, Sayyidah Asma actually passed away uh, when her son has been killed, in about two, three months after that. And when her son was killed, 
It is the year of uh, 73. 73 of Hijra. Okay, and then uh, she was 100 years old, or 101, something about 100 years old. Okay, so they say, uh, let's take off, means uh, she, she passed away at the year uh, 73, and then she was 100 years old. Now question, now question, when exactly she will be born? To go with this opinion, please. So she was born 10 years before Hazrat Aisha. No, 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 no. So let, let's calculate this one. So it means Hijra is there. Am I right? Hijra is uh, 73rd of Hijra and she was 100 years old. Okay, means when exactly she was born? 27 before Hijra. 20, uh, 27, 27 before Hijra. Okay. And then we'll take off minus um, uh, 13. And what is this 13? It is a prophethood. Right. Okay. Okay. So that is prophethood. Means uh, 13 before Rasul, 13 years before Rasulullah sallallahu uh, alaihi uh, became prophet. Okay. Means Sayyidah Aisha is uh, younger than Sayyidah Asma for 10 years minus 10. So what will be the number? It will be three. Means said I, uh, Aisha was born at three before the prophethood, which will again fit with the tafsir of Imam Bukhari, in which he says, when Surah Al Qamar has been revealed, I used to be girl playing. Do you remember? And Surah Al Qamar revealed at the year three after the prophethood. Means said Aisha would be six years old when Surah Al Qamar is revealed, and after after that, after. Um, uh, six years, Rasulullah married her. So, so then that will be um, 12 years and it will not be um, uh, six years. Okay, so according to this, they say uh, that is the calculation actually. That is the calculation which is 12. So these are uh, very strange numbers actually coming out. And then, there is another narration. So, inshallah, I'm going to leave all of the references, okay, for all of these quotations, actually. And there is another narration. Uh, there is another narration in which uh, Abu Nu'im al-Asbahani, actually, in his book about, about the Sahaba, Ma'ifat the sahaba Say that Sayyida, um, Sayyida Asma was born uh, 27 years before the prophethood. 27 years before the prophethood. Okay? And it is Ijma that Sayyida Aisha is younger than Sayyida Asma for 10 years. Means Sayyida, uh, uh, Sayyida uh, Aisha will be born um, 17 years before the prophethood. And after the prophethood, after 11 years, Rasulullah married her. So according to this, Sayyidah Aisha would be 28 years when Rasulullah married her. And uh, 30, uh, 31 years when she did move into the house of Rasulullah Okay. These very strange uh, quotations actually. <coughs> But that question, for me, is also very interesting because how come that there will be so huge uh, different numbers but then is only the known opinion that say that Aisha it was six years old and nine years old, you know? So then, recently I had uh, uh, a case in which, uh, you know, for example, uh, Isa a.s. praying behind Imam Mahdi, do you know? Means meeting each other, okay? But then, um, that is the direct meaning of the hadith wa imamuhum al mahdi etc so then uh, but if you go to compare all of the hadith it never matches and there is clear cut hadith in which rasulullah says says that isa alayhi will pray behind the third person khalifa after the main mahdi 
Okay, so how, how did I get to, to that um, uh, 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 statement? Because um, if you go to see what is happening in the time, whenever Rasulullah speaks about what Isa will do, السلام, he never mentions Mahdi, and whenever Rasulullah speaks about Mahdi, he never mentions Isa. السلام. That's one thing. Okay, the second thing, the time of Imam Mahdi, Rasulullah السلام, says, تنعم أمتي نعمة لم تتنعم قبلها ولن تتنعم بعدها. Within seven years of Imam Mahdi, my nation will be enjoying that type of enjoyment which my Ummah never did before and will never do after. But then when Rasulullah speaks about Isa alayhi salam, Allah is ordering Isa to take the leftover, I mean uh, remaining alive Muslims to take to uh, Tursina. Tursina is it would be one of the hills of Bradford, you know, that size. And that is the whole Muslim nation. Means a couple of uh, so, uh, tens of so, thousands of Muslims. And in that time, one head of a bull will be sold for 20 uh, golden coins. Okay? Means hardship, hunger, and thirst. It doesn't match with the period of Imam Mahdi, you know? If you will carry on comparing the ahadith uh, of the events of Isa al Islam and the ahadith of the event of um, Imam Mahdi, okay, so it never matches, you know. In the time of Mahdi, nothing mentioned about the Dajjal. Okay, or Yajuj or Majuj. Is it possible that Rasulullah <coughs> speaks about Mahdi in whose time there will be Isa al Islam, Mahdi, and, uh, and Yajuj, Majuj, and Rasulullah will say nothing about them? Uh, do you understand? So, the most popular opinion, it doesn't necessarily all the time mean that it is most reliable. All of the options on the table. So in your, in your opinion, Sheikh, which one is the most reliable? So actually, I used to believe, before I made this research, I used to believe that it is uh, six years old and nine, that, that's what used to be my belief. Okay? And then when I started making all of these research, so I say it's very strange. But now uh, I don't believe that uh, uh, this is quote authentic. Because there are some certain agreed upon issues which is not matching with this one. For example, 10 years between Sayyidah Asma and Sayyidah uh, Aisha, as well as Sayyidah Asma, when she passed away, her nephew says that she was 100 years old. Okay, and Abu Nu'aym quoting that she was born 27 years before the, uh, before the prophethood. Okay, so I'm giving you the things. So it looks very strange, actually. So, effectively, we don't know. No, because even, even the narrations look of the first yeah. group is ca crashing into each other. So they have to uh, give some certain interpretation to bring them yeah. together, you know? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I get from this. Is that you, you so, so far, no yeah. certainty is gained. Because look, each single thing is giving, as well as, do you know the age? No, for example, Salman al-Farsi. What was his age? So many disagreements. And some say 200, some say 300 years old when he passed away. Some say, some say that he was 200 years when he became Muslim. But then, when you go to uh, uh, the Sahaba, definitely it would be interesting uh, incident that some man from Persia, whose age is 200, coming to be, and then no one says nothing about it, you know? Mm. So, uh, because, so then, that's what I'm trying to say. So, yes, and age in that time, it was not that important, you know? And even in some of the hadith, Rasulullah says, if you will be asked about your age, I'm sorry, from one of the Sahaba, as well as uh, Abu Hanifa advises his students, when you will be asked about your age, do not say it. So, okay, so, no, because if you will look older than what you are, so then people will neglect you. But if you look younger than uh, you, what you are, so there was some certain thing. So, yes, and age, as you can see, is not that very accurate, actually. So, in my own understanding, um, uh, just to go with this opinion to say six, is not very matching, as well as to say that she was 28 also doesn't match that much, you know? So I say something between this and that, actually. So we don't know. There's, there's no certainty. Yeah. Okay, there you is no certainty. You have to be um, uh, agnostic about the number, you cannot know. Yeah, it, it, because so, it's not yeah. coming. Some accurate number is not coming, you know? Yes. Uh, Sheikh. What about those people, including, I believe, some non-Salafi scholars? Yeah. I, I may be wrong about the name, but I think it's a, it's a good scholar, like G.F. Haddad. Yeah. And they say it's, it's mutawatir, it's mass narrated, yeah. Veshi 6. So they, they're, they're quite uh, for, adamant about this. For, for, to say it is mutawatir, um, so I can say, I'm Michael Jackson. Who hmm. do you want? 
you know? But then, meaning of being Michael Jackson, for me, is that. You want, you don't want. So I say, for you guys, mutawatir is whatever you believe. But there are some uh, general understanding of mutawatir. So in each single generation, there should be so big number of people to say that narration is mutawatir. Everything will end up on Sayyidah Aisha, and the Sayyidah Aisha is only on her own who says it, you know? Once she says six, once she, she says seven. Okay, as well as after her, Tabai, who is narrating it, is only two or three. And even at Ma'at Tabai is also uh, is that, that number, you know? So, in the first three generations, it was not mutawatir, you know? Uh, do you understand what I mean? So let's suppose that in each single century, there are thousands of people narrating this, but only in one century, only one person, and then it goes back again to the thousands. We say, one will finish off all of this tawatu. Uh -huh. So in each single century, there have to be number of tawatu. Or, but just to say it is mutawatir. So I say, I'm George Bush, you know? Okay, I say, I'm Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why? Because my definition of Ali ibn Abi Talib is what I'm saying. Okay, but in terms of the general understanding, I'm not George Bush, as well as I'm not. So, according to the general understanding, it's not mutawatir, but maybe they do have different definition. Definition. Yeah. So, how much is mutawatir according to Bahanafi Maturi? There is no single any number, but it should be the number. Logically, you cannot say that they made up a story or they are all mistaken. Okay, so, so it it would be the, it's the so yeah. ten. 10 is not accepted by Hanafis, but it should be above, much more than uh, 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 10 that, uh, for example, you cannot. So sometimes it could be hundreds of narrators, but all of them from the same street. We say, logically, it's possible that all of them are mistaken. Mm. But it should be, for example, uh, 100 from each different places, you know? Okay, so there is not a specific number, but the most important thing is the tawatur is, logically, you, should, you shouldn't be able to avoid it. Yeah, Shay, uh, uh, um, is responsible for many hadiths yeah, yeah. and narrations. Yeah, yeah. Isn't, isn't there an indication within those hadiths at uh, the time that she uh, he was married to us yeah, yeah. Russell, yeah. Russell, yeah. and couldn't we not derive from that um, some kind of knowledge uh, from when she started writing the hadiths? Or when she started she, she never, to, she, to be a, she never wrote hadith, but she narrated them. Narrated? Yeah, yeah. When, the, when they were narrated, could we take some indication from that as to her age and what no, time she lived? Ma maybe, to... maybe you missed our first bit of the hadith. Ah, I think so, so because, for example, one of the statements, she said, when Surat al-Qamar has been revealed, I was a little girl. Okay, Surat al-Qamar revealed a, a second or third year after the prophethood. In that time, Sayyidah Aisha was a little girl playing, means six years old. Uh, do you understand? Means, according to that, it was not six years old when she was married, but 12 years old as a minimum, you know? So, you should just go back to the video, because we have spoken about all of these uh, questions, okay? So, uh, it is a bit strange, actually, you know? It is a bit strange, yes. So, Sheikh, um, I, I mean, I, I, I think this talk has been very uh, illuminating, but I'll give you maybe some of the objections which yeah, yeah, uh, yes, non-Muslims yes. and the Muslims will yeah, make. Yes, so yeah. you answered some of them, actually most of them. So the Mutawatir, the issue of how can you go against anything in Bukhari and all this. So generally this is, uh, I mean right or wrong, this is how it is in uh, Dawa field in UK at the moment. If something is in Bukhari, 100%, if you go against it, you are like evil. And uh, But the other thing they will say is, okay, the Quran itself it allows uh, marriage of children yeah. Yeah. even before they are menstruating, for okay. example. So then, if Quran but is allowing consummating uh, is prohibited Islamically. Ah, so then. So means it will be just engagement. But then you, for example, let's suppose that I will marry someone will give birth of a baby girl. I will marry her, okay? But that is agreement, engagement. But when she will start bleeding, only then I will have a right to uh, ask her to live with me because uh, uh, the adult uh, lady, wife, uh, husband will be responsible to maintain her. Okay, but before that, uh, we say it is one of the sins. Even some of the Hanafi scholars, for example, Birkawi, uh, the author of Ihya'ulum al-Din, Hanafi Ihya'ulum al-Din, classifies it as major sin. Right. So to, to force, uh, um, ha to have a sex, your immature wife. Because this is another issue which is brought up in Dawah, 
people say, uh, yes, according to the scholars, you cannot have sexual relations before puberty, of but people I'm say, sure. show me the proof. Uh -huh. And you did, so... No, okay. no, yeah. it's not proof, it is only quotation from Hanafi book, but there are a hadith and some certain uh, narrations. Inshallah, we'll have a word about it. Okay. We need some longer discussion about that. Yes. There's still a grey area, though, because um, you're saying that they can come and live um, yeah. when they reach puberty. Yeah, yeah. But when is it allowed to consummate? When do you identify the... Uh, when she will uh, become a mature adult. Mean means when she will be able uh, because a uh, uh, physical sign of being mature it is a sign of the psychologic uh, uh, maturity actually because so, what's the meaning of maturity age when body becomes adult and body is not separate from the mind you know both live together so both will uh, reach the uh, age of maturity together you know so if she so you're saying that nine she became mature and she lived with Prophet But so I'm trying to work out. So then, how do as a fiqh, uh, for example, giving fatawa? Yeah, yeah. How do we say to someone that does not mean? That no, 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 no. We don't yeah. say that. What I say, there are two problems. Yeah. One problem, just quoting the hadith saying that look, it says that he had sex at the age of uh, nine. nine. Hadith never says it. it Hadith says that? that she did move in. Okay. That's one thing. That's, that's problem. Yeah. And the second thing is it is it permissible Islamically to have a sex with mature girl? Yeah. We say yes. And what's the age of maturity? We say um, nine is the uh, beginning of the maturity. What's the meaning of uh, beginning? We say as soon as some girl becomes nine, now we expect her to become mature. But what's the meaning of maturity? As soon as she will start bleeding. So some girl can become mature. Okay, at the age of 12. But isn't it 9? We say 9 is the first expectation. Means, if she will start bleeding at the age of 8, we do not accept it. Because we say the first possible age of the maturity starts from 9. So when you say uh, possible maturity, you're talking about physical and mental? Uh, both, yes. So you're but as soon as she will start bleeding, so then we look at the age. Is she above, uh, above uh, 9 or not? If she is uh, less than nine, then that bleeding is not the sign of maturity. Okay. But so if it is after nine, we say now she became so mature. So bleeding is not. Uh, no, age is not. No, no, age is not uh, maturity. But we say bleeding is the sign of maturity. But it's then, sign, yeah. yeah. But then, condition of the bleeding to be the sign of maturity, we say age. Nine. As a minimum nine. Okay. But if some lady, if some girl, uh, reached the age of nine, now we are expecting her to start bleeding. 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. 13, so, 14, and till the age of 15, if she will not start bleeding, then we say now age is the sign of maturity, because after the age of 15, no one uh, remains as non-mature. Okay, so say for example she's 9, she's bleeding. Yeah, now she's mature, yes. But she's not ready for consummation. Though. We say as soon as uh, some girl will start bleeding, we say it is the sign of her being uh, uh, ready and uh, able to consummate uh, uh, sex, actually. Okay. To have, uh, so, so then someone can argue that at nine they did consummate that. No, no, no. Hadith doesn't say, say no, that. No, 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 but, but I'm saying, say, I understand that, but I'm yeah, saying yeah. through what you just said, yeah, yeah. then one could argue that yeah, yeah. consummation happened. Uh, where, where's the proof? You see, yeah, it's, no, no, it's, it's not even it's not, circumstantial no, evidence. No, 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 say, is, is, no, but no, then, no, is it possible? Hadith. We say Islam is That's what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah, it's yeah. possible yeah, yeah. that the Prophet be sort of like, yeah. Did consummate that? Yeah, it is possible. Islam is possible. possible. It's permissible. That's what I'm yes, correct. Okay. So that's so that's, that's the it, issue. Yeah. Correct. That's yes. what we're saying. It is permissible. Yes, Islam. Okay. okay. So therefore, the these so that's why they did. So that's because why they are permissible. Argue. They did. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the, okay. So it's possible and therefore permissible, and that's why they they uh, inducted that. That no, is the case. I, I, I don't say that. I say no, 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 permissibility these people, is not these necessary. Yeah, yeah. So even if it did happen, so Islam means there will not be any problem. Okay, okay, but would, would the condition have to be that she is physically and mentally mature? Sign of that is bleeding. So, uh, so uh, bleeding is a sufficient reason for maturity. Correct. Yes. Holistically. Uh, correct. Yes. In, in our Islam, yeah, according to four Madahi, we say bleeding is the sign of the maturity as long as she did pass the age of nine. Okay. So then, therefore. Um, the hadith talking about they moved in together. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's a, that's a strong reason to deny. No, no, we're not denying. I'm just but saying. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. No, no, it's not. Of course, yeah, it's not yeah. reason. 
but yeah. but it doesn't mean it is the same thing as to say I did slap someone, but then he died. So if I was say I did slap someone, you do not uh, you do not have a right to take revenge from me by killing. Yeah. Because yeah. I slapped him. Yeah. Didn't kill him. Slapping yeah. doesn't mean killing. Yeah. Bana aleha doesn't mean to have sex. You know. No, I understand that. Okay. But I, 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 I would say that's not a fair deduction, frankly, because basically you're ta it's like me saying in this country. Uh, having sex with a 16 year old is allowed so I'm my girlfriend is 16 and she came to my house yeah. and now definitely you say ah oh, well you know why would she go to his house because in in this country there's no such thing of like for, for sex it's only marriage right so let's say I say we have been dating for two years now she's 16 on her birthday she came to my house and she stayed over so you say definitely sex must have happened even though you didn't ask her you didn't ask me the, the, that's a ridiculous the, the issue is not uh, did it happen or not? The issue is... Okay, so anyway, um, no, yet we are uh, in the proof of the second group, you know? Okay, so we came up with different numbers in terms of the uh, age of the engagement of Sayyidah Aisha. So then, there is another interesting um, uh, evidence is coming. Uh, you know the book of Al-Isab of Imani Fatih Sahaba belongs to Ibn Hajj al asqalani But anyway, it is agreed upon opinion that there is difference between Sayyidah Fatima and say the Aisha, there is five years difference. So say the Aisha is younger, okay? But then, when exactly say the Fatima was born? If you remember, when Rasulullah in the Bina Kaaba, when they were repairing the Kaaba, and Rasulullah was at the age of 30, 35. Let's let's say 35 as a maximum uh, just to help out these brothers. Means uh, Rasulullah and then. Uh, uh, after five years, say the Aisha was born. Okay, so then what would be the age of say the uh, Rasulullah Islam when say the Aisha is born? Forty years. Means when Rasulullah became became prophet, say the Aisha was born. According to that narration, after that, after ten, eleven years, Rasulullah Islam married say the Aisha because uh, it was two years before the migration. Am I right? And it was 13 years after the prophethood till the migration. So what was the uh, age of Sayyidah Aisha according to this narration of the Isaba of Ibn Hajar Asqalani? Yes. So she must have been at least, um, if she's, um, so she must have been at least what, 10? 11, yes, as a minimum 10, 11. Why? Because when the Rasulullah started the mission at the age of 40, she was born. Hmm. And then after 11 years, Rasulullah Islam was engaged, okay, because after two years, he did migrate, you know, so it is 11 years old, so it is about five years more, and five years, we cannot make up that calcul Arabian calculation, you know, it's a bit uh, difficult actually. And it, it might be even more because you said you're taking the best exactly, 35, yeah, yeah. it might be 30. Exactly, it could be 30. Okay. And it's 16 like those guys say. Then. Exactly, yeah. and, and also, you know, the calculations are so strange. For example, when exactly Rasulullah Islam was born? The most popular opinion says that after one year, after the uh, uh, year of field. There is second opinion which says um, uh, exactly in the year of uh, field, okay, but the most reliable one year before the year of field. So then uh, it was uh, uh, one of the, uh, you can say, prayer miracles of the Prophet of Rasulullah because Rasulullah was in Mecca already. He was born and he was actually um, one year old when Phil came, you know. As you can see, even about the date of birth of Rasulullah, there is three opinions. So then if there is disagreement about Rasulullah, so what do you think about Sayyidina Aisha and the rest of the Sahaba? Uh, does make sense. Because Arabians, they didn't have set up uh, uh, like a calendar, as uh, Romans and Greek did have, you know? Okay. So that is another very uh, strange thing. As well as, um, there is another thing. Another thing, uh, say the Aisha and Usama. Who is Usama? Usama bin Zaid, Ibn Haritha. So then, uh, it's agreed upon opinion that when Rasulullah passed away, uh, Usama bin Zayd, uh, it is in everywhere, all of the sources, uh, uh, Ibn Kathir is mentioning it in Bidai, etc. So he was 18, 19 years old. Okay, 18, 19 years old. Uh, and then, there is hadith in uh, Musnad Imam Ahmad and Sunan al-Tirmidhi, 
in which Rasulullah uh, wanted to. Uh, so uh, Usman bin Zaid came and uh, nose was like uh, you know like um, maybe he had a uh, floor or whatever. And then Rasulullah stood up to go to wash uh, off his face. Said Aisha, said Ya Rasulullah, I will do it. Okay. And then, uh, as we know, that Said Aisha, according to the most uh, famous, I mean this, according to this uh, narration, what will be the age of uh, Said Aisha when Rasulullah passed away? So if in the year of migration, she was, uh, let's say, um, uh, eight or nine. After ten years, she was nineteen. Okay. And Usama bin Zaid, he was nineteen years old when Rasulullah passed. So they were equal in their age. Mm -hmm. So it does make a sense that uh, um, uh, Sayyidina Aisha says, "Ya Rasulullah, I will do it." So baby is washing the face of the baby, you know. Or another thing, in the uh, narration of uh, Tirmidhi, uh, Rasulullah did order Sayyidah Aisha to look after Usama bin Zayd. So baby ordered to look after the baby. Does make sense. There have to be age difference, you know? Yes. Ben Sheikh, what about the daughters of the Prophet, peace be upon him? When he married Aisha, if she was only nine, wouldn't uh, it, her, his daughters have been older than her? No, or the same age or? No, according to the last narration that I mentioned, uh, Sayyidah Fatima would be only fa uh, five years or older than Sayyidah Aisha. So she's, so basically the aim of Rasul, he marries someone yeah, yeah. to take care of household yeah. who is younger than... Exactly, yeah, yes. So, so according to the, to, to the last point, that's what it will be. Again, mm. even if we'll go with that one, it will go against this, you know, mm. because we said it will be 11 years. Okay, so it is um, uh, it's, it's a bit strange actually. So then anyway, um, uh, Rasulullah said to say to Aisha, oh Aisha, uh, uh, you should love and respect Usama because I love him. Okay, and Rasulullah did order her to look after uh, Usama bin Zayd because uh, his face was uh, dirty, he fell uh, uh, fell down. So then uh, it's not possible that you will ask the girl at the age of 11, towards the face of the boy at the age of 11 also. Mm. You will ask someone older than uh, 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 the second person. So it is another strange uh, 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 evidence also. And maybe the last thing I would mention, it is um, very well known that before Rasulullah married Sayyidah Aisha, she was already engaged. Yeah. Okay, she was already engaged. And uh, from this hadith actually, you can understand that Let's suppose that um, she was engaged, and we say that according to the first uh, opinion, she, at the age of six she was already uh, she was engaged to Rasulullah Okay, and the hadith in which Abu Bakr al-Siddiq narrates, okay, how this engagement happened, he says that my daughter was engaged, and I don't want to um, uh, break my uh, uh, agreement. So, so that hadith quotes that. The first uh, uh, engagement of Sayyidah Aisha, it was long ago. So anything, uh, there are two main things. Um, most likely, in my own understanding, maybe I will be very weak in terms of uh, stating my understanding, uh, it was before the uh, Prophet of Rasulullah that engagement took place. Why? Because Mut'im um, ibn uh, Adi, uh, he's a mushrik person and he died as a mushrik, you know? Okay? As well as his son. Uh, Jubair is, was also in that time Mushrik. Why? Because when Abu Bakr Siddiq went to Jubair uh, Musa ibn Adi to actually find out what is going on with the engagement, so Abu Bakr went and then uh, Mut'im said, uh, I don't know anything about the engagement, but whatever my wife decides, that's what is going to happen. Then his wife replied by saying, oh, Abu Bakr, I'm really afraid if I will marry off my son to your daughter, you are going to uh, convert my son into Muslim. Means in that time, Jubair uh, ibn Mut'im was not Muslim, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we say, uh, love of Abu Bakr towards Rasulullah and him being uh, committed with the Islam from the day one, I don't believe that he did engage, uh, engage his daughter to non-Muslim uh, after Abu Bakr becoming Muslim. Mm -hmm. It should be definitely, it should be before the Islam. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, means said that she was already engaged before the Islam already, you know, means for her to be engaged before Islam, at, at least she supposed to be born, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's say she was only breastfeeding baby, one year old, before Islam. So then according to that narration, she will be something about 11, 12 years again, when she was engaged to Rasulullah. Okay. Engaged. Yeah. So it is actually, now you mention it, it's very strange So Abu Bakr, yeah, being so committed to Islam, yeah, and, yeah. Then and then marrying off uh, to non-Muslim, to, to non-Muslim, yes, that would be ajib. No, yeah. for me it's ajib. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, so I cannot. Uh, uh, but, but then even the prohibition of this type of marriage came uh, slightly after that. But as you know, Abu Bakr was acting as a Muslim even before the Islam. Do you know? Mm, no. And his love to Rasulullah and him being committed by his wealth and by everything, and I don't accept that uh, he did marry off his daughter to the idol worshipper. Mm. Especially, he never worshipped the idol by himself, you know? Mm. So, for, for, so definitely, I say this engagement took place definitely before Islam, before Rasulullah started the mission, you know? So it is strange uh, evidences, you know? So for, I, I, for me, it's not strange, because uh, the dates, calendar, and the age, they did, didn't have any, you know? in the Arabian, uh, like peninsula in that time. Okay, so anyway, the various um, uh, other things, uh, so uh, various other um, uh, uh, issues, maybe it would uh, help out somehow. For example, uh, uh, do you know, uh, one issue being uh, non, uh, uh, non-acceptable in one culture, it doesn't mean that I can judge by using my culture upon you. Do you understand what I mean? So, for example, uh, uh, in our culture, is not uh, is not uh, do not sneezing even in the tissue in front of the people is disrespectfulness. Mm. In, in my culture, in Uzbekistan, you know. But then in other cultures, it's fine as long as you are sneezing in the tissue paper. Am I right? So then, one noble person in the UK sneezes. So can I? Do I have a right using my culture saying he is evil man? He's not noble. It's incorrect, am I right? Mm. So then let's revise the culture of the uh, Arabians in terms of, uh, um, in terms of uh, 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 marriage cases. It's, it's very famous thing. For example, as you know, um, uh, say uh, Umar radiallahu anhu made proposal to say the Fatima, am I right? And then Abu Bakr also did proposal to say the Fatima. And both of Abu Bakr was uh, at the age of Rasulullah, two years younger. Okay, and then. Uh, uh, but then uh, Umar made proposal عنه, to say the Fatima. Okay, but then say the Fatima married Ali radiallahu anhu, and after that say the Fatima gave birth of say the Zainab. Okay, and then Umar radiallahu made proposal to the daughter of the lady to whom he made proposal, and he married her daughter. You know, from here one standard, it was just a normal custom and uh, uh, accepted tradition. Yeah, as well as. Um, Uh, as well as, uh, uh, do you know Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah wasalam, he married um, uh, uh, Hala, Hala uh, who was the, actually related to Sayyida Amina. Okay? Uh, 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 the, the, um, uh, Sayyida Amina, the mother of Rasulullah wasalam, so he married uh, to, uh, uh, to, to Hala and Actually, she was at the age of something between five to seven. And Abdul Muttalib, you know, by that age, he was uh, over 50, 60, you know. Okay, so um, uh, from there, we can understand, actually, we can understand that uh, it was uh, 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 the, the age uh, issue in that culture, there was no any problem. As well as, for example, Qudama bin Mad'un, uh, uh, married the daughter of uh, Ab, uh, of Zubair ibn al-Awam when she was born, exactly in the same day when she was born. Engagement, you know. Yeah. So as you can see, in terms of the age um, uh, barrier, it would not be any problematic in that culture. So using our culture to judge upon the people of other cultures is it, it, is not correct. Because what is wrong? Wrong is when you oppose your own culture incorrectly. You know. But if you uh, uh, accord your culture, 
but disagree or, or and oppose uh, culture of others, it doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. Sheikh, that's quite interesting. So that, that would mean then uh, within this current culture that yeah. you wouldn't be allowed to do that because uh, they don't... Uh, no, no, uh, sure. culture in Hanafi Mother, for example, one of the sources of Islam. Okay, but then we say that only when it doesn't crash, culture doesn't crash into the Islam. For example, in uh, Egypt, they did, uh, uh, scholars, Sheikh Al-Azhar and other Grand Mufti, for a so, uh, 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 long time, they uh, issued fatwa that uh, as long as there is difference of 20 years between husband and wife, marriage will be not valid, it's not permissible, based on your uh, case, actually, because custom doesn't allow that. Okay, so we Hanafis, we take the culture if, if it doesn't crash into the, uh, into the Sharia, actually. Okay, anyway. Briefly, let's revise uh, uh, whatever we did cover today. So in terms of uh, Sayyidah Aisha being at the age of six when she was engaged to Rasulullah, it is a narration of Bukhari Muslim from Sayyidah Aisha. And then Imam Muslim narrated another narration from Sayyidah Aisha again, saying that she was at the age of uh, seven. Okay, and then we did calculate from the date of uh, death of Sayyidah Aisha, okay, from their source, and it was the age of four when she was engaged. And then we did revise different other uh, um, proofs uh, from different books. So uh, one of them was uh, uh, Tabari and uh, Ibn Hisham uh, uh, um, uh, confirming the uh, date of birth of uh, Sayyidah Aisha. They said in Jahiliya. Okay? And in terms of Sayyidah Aisha being the, one of the first earliest Muslims, okay, within the first three years before Umar radiallahu anh, uh, as well as uh, half of the Maqdis, he said, in the first year of the prophethood. Okay? After that, uh, Badr Said Aisha being part of Badr. After that, Said Aisha being part of uh, uh, Uhud. And after that, the difference between Said uh, Asma and Aisha, the rest of the proofs. Actually, so all of them are give, giving totally different, non matchable things. Okay? As well as the, the brothers and sisters who studied the Sira. Uh, do you remember the, the issue of the Ifk? When they insulted Said Aisha. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you read that story properly, uh, so, according to this narration, Sayyidah Aisha will be at the age of 12. But how she was responding and how she was dealing, so uh, it is a uh, um, description of that will match with the lady who will be something about 25, 35 years old lady. How she's responding to what people say and how she's acting. So, the, the lady, age 12, wouldn't do that type of uh, uh, like um, uh, conversations and dialogues with the prophet and with uh, her uh, parents and with the rest of the people, you know. So, it is um, uh, quite problematic thing. So, for me, uh, after uh, um, uh, researching all of these proofs, I say um, it's uh, not very easy to accept this thing, you know. Mm. Even though before that, I was 100% confident. It's quite strange to say that uh, a girl of nine achieves maturity full stop because these days it's about 12, 13, unless she was an exceptional case. It's quite, no, no. It's quite early. You know, we say the maturity age will start from nine, okay, as a maximum 15. So any time within this time, within this period. Yeah, but, but, but is that based on that though? Which one? On this, is it based on those hadith? Because maturity, you said when you the menstruating. The yeah, blood. yeah. That's the that's the sign, yes, correct. But where did they get the nine from? Is it because of that? That type of a hadith, yes, correct. <coughs> so then that's just already believing in that to sort of demonstrate that it's true. But maturity is it's quite strange for a nine year old to start believing it nine yeah. year old. Usually what we have is sort of uh, twelve. No, 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 I'm not saying this is the thing, but I say this type of a hadith which indicates the age of nine. For example, the uh, kid will uh, be in order to pray, for example, at the age of seven, and then nine is there also, you know, the age of nine is included in there, you know? Right. And then uh, your daughter and son, they can sleep together in one bed uh, till the age of, for example, seven, and after that they will be separated, you know? So the age of, the minimum age of uh, maturity is taken from different many okay, hadiths, right, okay. not this one only, I, I many hadiths in which uh, number nine mentioned. Okay. So Sheikh, um, it's been very interesting and thorough actually. It shows how much uh, actually people are answering without having knowledge yeah. uh, in, in, yeah. in other fields. Uh, so just one last thing I wanted to ask you. Some unfriendly Christians, they like to use the... There is a narration of Hazrat Aisha that she brought her dolls into yeah. the house of Rasulullah. 
She had her dolls or her toys. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with her. Yeah, so I, they I like know that. I don't know how authentic, but uh, I know that uh, I know that thing. So they say, and that she was playing on a swing as well. There's another something yeah. similar like this. Okay. So they say this is proof that she was just a child when she went to, because only a child would play with swing or only a yeah. child would play with doll. I mean, to me that doesn't make sense anyway. No, okay. Because okay, so uh, I really would love to meet these uh, Christian people uh, because um, I did have an experiences because uh, I made proposal to the to the ladies, you know, and, and married them. Okay, not them. Okay, I married my wife, for example, mm -hmm. and then it's uh, I, uh, uh, for example, it's very common that uh, you give some dolls, you know, mm -hmm. to the lady at the age of 25 also. Do you, do you understand what I mean? And uh, I would ask these uh, uh, Christians uh, if they have a daughters at the age of 20, so if they will uh, give them a gift of a doll. So if their daughters will say, oh, how oh, come? Then I say, you are right. But if they say, if they will take it and will be happy, I say, that's the proof, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And actually, there's even some men who play with models and, you know, Gundam, and those robots, we yeah, make yeah. them and we yeah, keep yeah. them on our shelf. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so then, it's not limited on the age yeah. of six or five, do you understand what I mean? So even, I know some, uh, uh, some of my relatives actually, someone who's related, some lady who's related to me, uh, her husband actually, uh, gave her the, uh, do you know the uh, uh, Winnie, Winnie Pooh? Winnie the Pooh? Mm. Winnie the Pooh, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's 31 years old and she sleeps with the Winnie the Pooh, you know? Mm. I swear by the name of God. And that is next to, beside to another bear, you know? Mm. Uh, each of the bears <coughs> reminds her with something and the last one, which is the close one, is from her husband, you know? Mm. I, 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 <laughs> for, for us it's strange, but ladies do it, you know? Mm. 31, she's not 31 years old. Still, she sleeps with three bears, and the closest one to hug is that uh, her uh, husband's uh, bear, Winnie the Pooh, you know? So, um, Sheikh, um, about doll, um, I heard it's not allowed in Islam to have doll. No, it's correct. No. I don't. No, no, no. But doll for the, it's, it's permissible, yes. So I heard that um, Allah will ask you to make it alive. On That's no, no, But for know? the baby, yeah, for the baby is permissible. Okay. Yeah. So you can, you can have like dolls and eyes and all that? As for the, for the babies, babies you know? Yeah, there are some uh, Sahaba who gave to their uh, daughters the dolls and they used to play with it and it's permissible, yes. And, and animals as well? Sorry? Animal, like, uh, animals like... Animals, human beings, dolls. Yeah, human dolls. Human yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we say fine. But this is a monument or oh. picture, art, okay. we say then it's not permissible. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so that's all for, uh, for today about this matter, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, ma ba'd So uh, it is just uh, um, uh, very, uh, uh, very briefly, just uh, I wanted to go through the same uh, issues which we did mention the other day about the age of Sayyid Aisha as well as just to mention maybe a couple of extra issues and um, yeah, for me actually it's, uh, it's very uh, strange actually um, uh, because, uh, mashallah, uh, when I was uh, researching, but before I started my research, I used to def uh, very, very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I used to have very strong belief that uh, Sayyid Aisha used to be uh, six years old when she was married and nine years old when she did move into the house of Rasulullah. But anyway, after my research, uh, uh, actually, I uh, uh, I am not that confident on that, uh, on that issue. Uh, so I do not say that there is some specific age, for example, 18 years old. But what I can say now, I say maybe we may not give very accurate information about what age she was because the, the narrations are conflicting with each other. Okay, so that's one thing. And the second thing in terms of uh, when, when, uh, the responses which came, it was very, uh, it uh, um, <coughs> like uh, describes the, uh, you can say the, uh, a level of the uh, morals and the behaving of the people who are sending the responses and I, I don't believe that most of these people who are sending these very uh, you can say hurting words I don't believe that they do have any educational back background I don't think that they did study but anyway uh, uh, it, it uh, proves uh, it just uh, describes them more than it describes me but anyway um, one thing is 100% age of say the Aisha is not part, part of Islam so anyone who will have a research, it doesn't mean that he's researching about 
um, uh, authenticity of God being there and prophet being prophet. There is nothing to do with this and that. Okay, it means anyone who will make research, it doesn't mean that he's an, an enemy of Islam or enemy of the prophet. N nothing to do. So what? So what? My question, uh, what is the exact date of birth of Rasulullah We have three opinions. One is one year before the uh, feel, okay, and one says exactly in the year of feel, and third says uh, one year after uh, the year of feel. Okay, so the most popular, it says uh, one year after the uh, year of uh, uh, feel, elephant, but uh, I do believe that it is actually one year before uh, arrival of feel. Okay, so if uh, the uh, narrations are conflicting about the uh, date of birth of Rasulullah, and as you know, uh, Rasulullah is the most important personality, not in Islam, but in the whole universe. Because there is no one more, uh, more uh, you can say, noble and more, you can say, respected in the whole universe, including the prophets. There is no one who is higher than the prophet. So, if narrations were conflicting about Rasulullah, so what do you think about anyone else? It's not a matter of uh, belief and disbelief, you know. So that is about the year. But on top of that, we do have uh, conflicting narrations about uh, the day, uh, day of the birth. Not the year of birth, but day of the birth. Some say 7th of um, uh, Rabi al Awal. Some say it is 9th. Some, some, uh, some say that it is 12th. And the most popular, the mo most popular is 12th, but the most reliable uh, that it is a 6th or 7th. Okay, so as you can see, so uh, uh, so if some opinion is the most popular, it does not mean that it is the most reliable. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's not uh, like uh, uh, one uh, necessitating the other. Okay, or for example, another issue um, we did uh, mention in the um, uh, uh, Arbain of the uh, Mahdi about uh, Imam Mahdi meeting or not meeting Isa a.s. The most popular that he meets, but the most reliable, but that they never will see each other. Okay, so the biggest proof for that is uh, Rasulullah a.s. says about seven years of the um, uh, of uh, Mahdi uh, a.s. saying that my ummah never was enjoying by dunya before and my ummah will never enjoy like that after, before and after. But then what, what Rasulullah SAW says about seven years of Isa alayhi salam, Rasulullah SAW says one head of the bull will be 20 golden uh, dinars because of the hunger. And all of the Muslim population, so if, when they will go to the hill of Tur, so that, I mean, that will be sufficient for them. So it's only a few thousand uh, Muslim in the whole world. Uh, do you understand? Um, by revising many other proofs, actually, we come to conclusion that uh, the most popular opinion is the mo less reliable opinion. Okay, but what about hadith saying that Imam Mahdi is praying uh, behind uh, Isa alayhi salam? So that is mudraj hadith. You cannot take it. I mean, that extra is not from the Prophet, but from one of the narrative. But anyway, so the most important thing is the most popular doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the most reliable. Okay, that is, uh, just forget about that one. Or well, within we as Hanafis, within the Hanafi Madhab, you know the most popular opinion about where, how you should be holding your hand. They say two fingers holding like that and three on top. This is the less reliable. Okay, or well, another opinion. What is the most popular opinion how you should be wiping over your head? So first three fingers goes back and then palms comes back, you know, and then... So that is the most popular and the less reliable, okay? So <clears throat> some opinion being very well known, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the, the most reliable, okay? So just forget about that thing, okay? So let's be more uh, academical and let's forget about the emotions, okay? Um, so that's one thing, as well as <clears throat> the brothers, actually, uh, actually, so when they were um, uh, going through the narration, so uh, they mentioned that anyone who actually doubts on the age of Sayyid Ashi, so he is doubting on uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. It's a very <coughs> uh, strange, uh, uh, strange uh, <coughs> uh, period because the same thing when it was from their side, they said anyone who goes against us, uh, so, so if you remember the story of Banu Quraydah. So <coughs> Imam Bukhari, Muslim, and 10 other authentic sources did mention that it is Muqatila. But only Ibn Hisham said all of men. 
Okay, so in that matter, anyone who would go against them, he would be against something strange, you know? Again, insulting words, etc. So then why uh, Bukhari, when he is with all of the ten Muslim, Ibn Hibbar, Ibn Khuzaym, all of them authentic scholars, opposing Ibn Hisham, they're going with Ibn Hisham, and that's not uh, uh, like, uh, you can say, scratching the uh, authenticity of the Bukhari. But when it is, many narrations, again, opposing, for example, the narration of Bukhari, so then we cannot go with the others. So it is double standard. So I, I think it, it is not very uh, academical, actually. <coughs> anyway, we'll try to mention all of them, inshallah, in here. Anyway, in terms of, say, the Aisha, uh, as you know, we did mention the last week also. So uh, there is hadith in Bukhari and Muslim in which uh, Sayyid Aisha says that she was six years old when uh, Rasulullah married her. and. She was nine years old when she did move in. <coughs> That's one thing. As well as Imam Muslim did mention uh, other narration in which uh, Sayyid Aisha says, I was seven years old okay, when, she, when he married me and nine years old when I moved into his uh, house. Anyway, and we have the same thing about six years and nine years uh, narrated from Abu Dawood with the authentic hadith as well as Nasai, Ibn Majah. And uh, uh, by the way, Ibn Majah says she was seven years old as Imam Muslim narrates, okay? Uh, and then Imam um, uh, Ahmad also uh, says that um, uh, she was six years old. So that's the... Uh, so, so anyway, uh, <coughs> it is not something that we can doubt that all of them scholars confirm that it is six and nine. Okay, so the chain and all of the narrations are authentic, no doubt. <coughs> Um, and also, there is, uh, so that is um, one side. And the second side, if you remember, we mentioned uh, many narrations. Okay, so uh, one of these narrations, uh, I don't remember if we did mention or not, um, uh, Imam Tabari as well as Ibn Hisham, both of them, they did mention that Sayyida Aisha and uh, Sayyida Asma um, uh, and all of uh, uh, the kids of uh, um, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, they were born in Jahiliya, okay, and uh, <coughs> some of the uh, brothers, I don't believe that it's scholar, scholarly, uh, you can say, uh, discussion, so what did he mention? He quoted exactly the same uh, narration, so what does it say? It says, just listen to it, <coughs> um, <coughs> he, uh, he was mentioning uh, about Umm Ruman, Umm Ruman is the mother of uh, Sayyid Aisha, فولدت له عبد الرحمن وعائشة فكل هؤلاء الأربعة من أولاده ولدوا من زوجتيه اللتين سميناهما في الجاهلية. So it means that أم رمان she gave birth of عبد الرحمن بن أبي بكر as well as سيد عائشة. And then he says طبري as well as ابن هشام they say فكل هؤلاء الأربعة من أولاد. So all of them four kids of Abu Bakr. Wulidu min zawjatehi. So they were born from two of his wives. Allatani, those two wives, sammayna huma. That we did mention. But then he says, fil jahiliya. In the time of jahiliya. So then he says, sammayna huma. In here we did mention them. Uh, and then he uh, says that it means we did mention them that he, Abu Bakr, married them in jahiliya. Okay, it never works. It's not in Arabic language. So, Samina Huma Fil Jahiliya means they were, they were uh, born in Jahiliya. Okay, from whom? From them to uh, uh, wives of him that we did mention. That does make sense. So, in here, if you want to make this text to mean that he did marry them in Jahiliya, so you have to say, Allatain is Samina Huma Annahu Tazawaja Huma Fil Jahiliya. Uh, that does make sense. So it is really badly twisted, uh, you can say, translation, yes. Well, that, that's uh, very <coughs> interesting you should mention that, because in uh, mm -hmm. a rather excessively long uh, reply that yeah. was uh, posted, one of the arguments was that this narration uh, doesn't mean that the Hazrat Aisha and Hazrat Asma were born in yeah. the time of Jahiliya, yeah, yeah. but only <coughs> that they were married in uh, the time of Jahiliya, yeah, Hazrat yeah. Abu Bakr <coughs> married both his yeah, yeah. wives. Uh, so you're saying linguistically it doesn't no, no, make sense? It does, it does fit. So, so what, what, what we can do, we just uh, <coughs> bring someone, some Arabian, okay, and we'll make him to read it. So some natural person who is not with us and who is not with the others. So we will ask him to, to read it. 
Okay, so for that meaning that you are referring to, um, uh, so look, uh, look uh, into this. I will uh, translate it literally. Will you do? <coughs> so them were born means zaujatehi from his two wives allatehi that these two uh, wives samayna huma that we mentioned, and then fil <coughs> jahiliya. So if they just to support their opinion, it means that Tobari mentioned them in Jahiliya, means Tobari was born in Jahiliya, and then he did mention them saying, oh, them two wives, and then he died, and then he was resurrected when he was writing his uh, book, and then he was referring to himself, that we did mention them in Jahiliya time. Okay? Or other option, that we did mention them, okay, above. Okay? But fil jahiliya, it cannot be that we did mention them in jahiliya. Because if it would be about him mentioning in jahiliya, means he, he did, Abu Tabari was born in jahiliya and he mentioned them in jahiliya time. Okay? Or another option, in jahiliya, them for uh, kids were born in jahiliya. Right. Does make sense? But in terms of we did mention them, <coughs> means. Uh, he married them in Jahiliya. For that, we need extra word, which is ex not word but extra sentence, which is we did mention them that Abu Bakr married them in Jahiliya. Okay, so for that, we need this extra. Wulidu min zawjatehi latayni sammayna huma annahu tazawajahuma fil Jahiliya. Annahu tazawajahuma is not word but it is one whole sentence. And Arabians do not. Uh, delete these type of sentences without leaving very strong proof. There is no any proof in here. Mm. It is, ling linguistics very strange. I mean, uh, I, I, as you know, most of us are uh, not, not proficient in Arabic, but what I will say is uh, the text which has been circulated about this, even the English translation yeah. doesn't mean, it's, it's wrong actually, so even the English translation doesn't mean that the Children were not born in Jahiliya, even in the, how they translated it to show yeah. us English speakers that <coughs> it was not in the time of Jahiliya doesn't work. So even in English, they didn't seem to do a good job. Of yeah. it. So it is quite strange, actually. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, in Arabic language, um, I don't know these brothers who uh, translated if they will understand me or not, because so in Arabic language, they do have something called Jar Majroor. So, fi is half of jar, al jahile is majroor. So, whenever we have jar majroor, we need muta'allaq. Because jar majroor is very weak uh, uh, element in the uh, text. So, it cannot be, exist, I mean, it cannot exist in the text, in the uh, sentence, without standing or without being uh, based on the verb. Okay? And in, the pre in, in here, we have only two verbs. Wulidu. <coughs> means they were born in Jahiliya or Samayna Huma in Jahiliya. We mentioned them in Jahiliya. But there is no any Tazawaja Huma. There is no any Do you understand? So, Fil Jahiliya Jar Majroor has to be attached and connected to the verb. And in the sentence we have only two verbs. Okay? So as I explained, <coughs> so it will be one of two. Fil Jahiliya, in Jahiliya, what in Jahiliya? They were born in Jahiliya, or we did mention them in Jahiliya. Means, I was in Jahiliya, and then I named them, saying, all oh, them two ladies, and then he went, came back to our, back, you know, to, to our life, and then was writing the, the book, and then he says, do you remember I mentioned them in Jahiliya? So it's that, you know? Right. But in terms of, so because for them to say that he married them in Jahiliya, we need third verb, you know? Ah. Which is not there. So because the verbs are... The verbs are so there's only... <laughs> Jar Majroor needs verb. Or okay. otherwise, uh, so uh, without uh, having a verb in the uh, sentence, uh, uh, Jar Majroor cannot exist there. Right. And Fil Jahli is Jar Majroor. And even an Arabic <coughs> reader today reading this would understand it as they were born in... So oh, this is not controversial. Because, I mean, there is no option that Tobari mentioned them in Jahiliya. Mm. Okay, or third option could be still valid option. Uh, 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 um, uh, two wives that I did mention in the chapter of Jahiliya. Right. But there is no in his book chapter of Jahiliya, okay, in which he says, okay, Al-Jahiliya, and then he will mention them. them. But it's, uh, it's one of them too. Okay, so either they were born in Jahiliya or I shouted their name or I did call them in Jahil. I was in Jahil, so I named them in Jahil. 
So it does make sense, you know? Right. Yes, so it is just... Uh, so it is one of those issues from which I say that these brothers are not academic. They do not have any uh, background in the Arabic language, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's from there. So, uh, so anyway, uh, so I mean, this actually... Uh, uh, the first conflicting uh, narration to all of these narrations that mm -hmm. say that Aisha was uh, six or seven when she was married. Okay? So this doesn't support them, but actually it uh, disproves disproves what they are referring to. <coughs> and then the sources of it is, um, in my, in my uh, electronic copy of the, of the book, is uh, the fourth volume of uh, Tariq of Tobari, and page number 50, and in Ibn Hisham, uh, first volume, uh, page number 65. <coughs> okay, um, and also, you know, there is uh, another thing, which I didn't mention the last week, so, it is not very, maybe very accurate, maybe it may not be very strong, but for me it is still sufficient to get engaged into these, uh, you can say, controversial narrations. Um, one thing, can I ask you, if you can just help me, <coughs> when was the arrival of Fil, Ashabul Fil? It was the year in which Rasulullah was born, or after one year, or before one year. Okay, uh, so, um, uh, and then, uh, so that will be, <coughs> that will be, so let's go with the brothers who say that when Rasulullah married Sayyid Aisha, she was six years old. Okay, so then, um, uh, 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 before how many years uh, it will be the year of Am? If you can just help me please. <coughs> No, I don't think there's any good, good mathematician. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to re rely on Suleiman again. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, please can you help us? Let's go with the opinion which says that Rasulullah Islam married Sayyid Aisha uh, when she was six years old. Mm. Okay, means uh, so that was exactly one year before the migration, yeah. and Rasulullah spent thirteen years in Mecca. Mm. Means uh, Rasulullah. So she was born. She was born uh, after six years after the prophethood. Am I right? Mm. Yes. Yes. And then, so that's six years. And then Rasulullah started the mission at the age of 40. Means between the uh, uh, birthday of uh, Sayyida Aisha and the event incident of Phil, there was 40, uh, uh, six years, according to this narration. Am I right? 46 years. Yes. 46 yeah. years. 46 years. So if um, if she was born in uh, the first year of prophethood, yeah. then yeah, if, even if you give and take one year, it will be 40 because Rasulullah, he was 40, right? When, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 46 years. 46, when they got married. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Not 46. 46 when Sayyid Aisha was born, according to the narration in which brothers said that uh, Sayyid Aisha was six years old when Rasulullah married her. Six right. years old. Okay? And that was one year before migration. And migration was uh, after 15 years after the mission. Uh, I'm sorry, 13 years. 13 years, right. Okay? Means uh, when Sayyid Aisha was migrating, she was. Uh, uh, no, no, actually, yeah, it's just a bit more. So it is 43, 44 hmm. years before uh, the birthday of Sayyidah Aisha. Hmm. So, Qisat uh, al happened about 43, 44 years before the birthday of Sayyidah Aisha. Am I right? Um, it depends, isn't it, where if it was one year before the birth of Rasulullah or not. But, yeah, roughly. Yes, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So then, uh, because... Uh, as I'm saying, it is not very accurate to mention this in here, but still, when there are other narrations, we can maybe uh, uh, mention it as, you can say, some secondary uh, issue. So anyway, um, there is a very strange um, narration from Ibn Ishaq. So it is in, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in uh, Bidayah wa Nihaya, as well as it is in uh, Tafsir ibn Kathir. Okay, and he did mention the chain of the narration. So if brothers are interested, they can go to uh, have a look into it. So Sayyidah Aisha in there, uh, she says that لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ قَائِدَ الْفِيلِ وَسَائِسَهُ بِمَكَّةَ أَعْمَيَيْنِ مُقْعَدَيْنِ يَسْتُطْعِمَانِ So then, anyway, 
um, uh, she said that I saw the um, I, th I saw two people who actually were uh, when with these invaders when they came to Mecca. So one who was actually uh, uh, holding the, the the elephant, and the second is the one who was training it. Okay. So I saw them in Mecca, and they were begging the people. Okay. Said I should mention that. So, uh, so uh, both of them they were alive. Okay, those people who were uh, actually uh, responsible for the field, for the elephant, okay, so uh, uh, they were still uh, alive there. Okay, so just, uh, if you just think about it properly, person cannot become a person who will look after the, um, after the elephant, uh, Sa'is means training, the one who trains the elephants to do and to not to do some certain things. Mm -hmm. So, it cannot be, for example, 10 years, 20 years old, a young man. So, it should be a person with good experience, 40, 50 years old, who can uh, train them, uh, the, the elephants. Okay, but then, say that Aisha says, I, I saw both of them in Mecca. Okay, so if we say, let's say that, uh, well, uh, them when they came to Mecca, there was something about uh, 40 years, okay, um, as, as a minimum. So then she saw her, she, she saw bo both of them, and it cannot be that she saw them in her childhood because she wouldn't recognize them, but being breastfeeding a baby. So at least she should be something about six, seven years old child for her to see and recognize, to understand what the feel and what are the... Uh, meaning of the uh, person who trains the field, you know. Okay, so, uh, according to this, the, both of them will be over the age of uh, 90 or something about 100 years old. Both of them are still alive, by chance, and in Mecca and begging the people. Mm. So it is a bit far, am I right? Well, they would be pretty old, even if they were, like, it would be strange for an 80-year-old man yeah, yeah. to be training an elephant. It, it, no, 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 it's not that. It's still possible though, isn't it, Sheikh? So, for example, 45 years later, yeah. the person training the elephant could be 30, even 35, because in them times, maybe people were training a lot more earlier. Yeah. So, you've got 70, 80, so it makes it 80, and let's say she was 7, 87. Yeah. So this is possible, 80, 80. Uh, I would say uh, 80 uh, years old uh, person in that time. And then sitting in Mecca, both of them being alive. So it is chance on top of the chance, you know. Uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So it is not very accurate proof, but uh, when we have got all of them narrations, it is something to consider. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, it is a bit strange, actually. It is, uh, for me, it's a bit strange. A anyway, um, uh, it is not very accurate, but anyway, it is something just to, yes. It's interesting you mentioned the elephant. So are you saying that... There's an authentic narration where Hazrat Aisha saw the elephant. No, 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 no. It's not that. But she saw uh, the person who was training. Uh -huh. I mean, who was responsible for that elephant. Right. So can you imagine, after 40 years, after, fo after 45 years, after 43 years, people still uh, recognize the person, hmm. okay, and uh, who was trainer, uh, who was... Uh, uh, responsible, so it is two people, not only one, right. Sa'is and Qa'id. Qa'id, the one who holds it, hmm. okay, brings it, and the second is Sa'is, okay, the one who trains, huh. okay, and also uh, Sa'is, the one who trains the, the, the elephant, it ca he, ca he couldn't be at the age of 20 when he would be an experienced trainer, you know, hmm. uh, do you understand what I mean? So it is the same as to say, uh, we have got a person who is expert on training the horses and he's 20 years old man. Hmm. Never can be. Uh, right. Do you understand what I mean? As well as it is the elephant of the uh, king of, the, of uh, Yemen, Abraham. Uh, does make sense. So it will not be young man, but it will be very experienced, a middle-aged person. Because um, it's, it's interesting if there was actually still an elephant there, because some people say... How can there be an elephant in these hot climates and in Yemen and all yeah, of yeah. it? So they, they argue, so if an elephant was still there, that would be a proof that there definitely was an army of elephants. But she didn't actually see the physical elephant. No, no. Oh, okay. But she saw them the two people trainers, who yeah. brought the, the oh, elephants okay. to destroy the Kaaba. Right. Okay. So it means after <coughs> 43 years, okay, people recognizing them two people, 
Okay, so uh, so it proved that it is one of them too. Others say that Aisha was uh, uh, very 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 mature. Okay, uh, as well as it was not very far um, a period, it not big period between uh, uh, people of feel coming and say that Aisha seeing. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. Yeah, but anyway, it is something just to consider. It's not very uh, accurate. Anyway. Um, and also, if you remember the other thing, uh, we did mention that uh, um, Sayyidina Aisha mentioned uh, in some of the sources that she was one of the early um, uh, uh, followers of Rasulullah And here are the references. So it is, Ibn Ishaq did mention it. So in my electronic copy of the book is uh, page number 108. As well as Ibn Hisham did mention that she was one of the earliest followers of Rasulullah um, uh, And that was uh, Ibn Hisham. Also, in my electronic copy, uh, pay, uh, it is a uh, um, uh, second volume, okay, uh, in the chapter where the, uh, Ibn Hisham mentions the first people who uh, 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 followed Rasulullah by the da'wah of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. So, in there, it mentions that, Wa Aisha bin Abi Bakr wa hayyum maidin saghira. So, Asma and Aisha, they did follow uh, Rasulullah and then Aisha was yawm maidin saghira, young uh, girl. Okay, and you cannot say that, uh, for example, uh, two years old breastfeeding baby uh, did uh, follow Rasulullah. You can you cannot say that. Mm -hmm. At least she has to be something about um, seven, eight, as well as I, I don't believe that it could be six years. Okay, uh, because six years old, can you say that she followed Rasulullah six years old? So it should be mature uh, girl. Something I would say something about uh, above uh, eight, nine, something like that. Anyway, and the next reference um, uh, for this one is Arrudu um, al-Anif, uh, also it, is, um, uh, it belongs to the author uh, whose name is Abu Qasim al-Suhayli, Abdurrahman bin Abdullah, uh, who actually passed away at 581st of the, uh, uh, of the Hijra, uh, as well as um, uh, Mutahhar, Mutahhar bin Tahir, also mentions that she was one of the earliest followers of uh, Rasulullah and Mutahhar bin Tahir passed away at 355th, okay, she, early, uh, early author, yes? Do you know the narration about Hazrat Abu Bakr? Yeah. He, that he gave da'wah, that's within the first three years, isn't it? it I'm going to that. Oh, is that a different narration? I, yeah, all of them uh, confirmed that. Because, because there is some refutation of this point, right. I want to mention it then, inshallah. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Mutahhar um, bin Tahir, uh, who uh, actually mentioned that فَكَانَ إِسْلَامُ هَؤُلَاءِ فِي ثَلَاثِ سِنِينَ So he said that all of them people, said the Aisha man, all of them uh, first, uh, earliest uh, um, generation of the Muslims, they followed Rasulullah within the three years. Okay, so in here he says, يَدْعُوا فِي خُفِيَ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَدْخُلَ دَارَ أَرْقَمْ بِنَ أَبِي أَرْقَمْ So before Rasulullah went into the house of Arqam bin Abi Arqam because uh, that event took place uh, at the end of third year of the mission. But Asma and Aisha, all of them, uh, uh, followed Rasulullah before that. Okay, and Mutahhar bin Tahir passed away at uh, 355th. Uh, so it is an uh, early author. And we do have one uh, uh, author who is even more early than all of them. It's Abu Zaid Ahmed bin Sahl al balkhi okay, who passed away at 322nd of Hijra, okay, who was born at 235 and passed away at 322nd. And uh, it is in his book called um, uh, Al Badr wa Tariqh, Kitab al Badr wa Tariqh, and it is in my um, PDF copy, it is uh, second volume, uh, page number 52nd. Okay. Um, so, Sheikh, you know these um, narrations? Yeah. So, for example, being a believer within the first three years, so, like, you, and you said that it's a Ijma, it's an agreed upon opinion that it was one year before um, migration that they got engaged. Yeah, correct, yes. So, it means even if at that age she was just a newborn baby, you had to be at a minimum nine years old at that time, isn't it? I didn't understand, sorry. So, if she's born three years within the first, sorry, within the first three years, she was one of the believers. Yeah. Which is when Rasulullah was forty-three. Yeah. And the agreed-upon opinion is that Rasulullah was fifty-two. 
Yeah. When they got married. Yeah. Around about that much. Yeah, yeah. So it means that even if at that time she was just born, yeah. which is not possible because to be a believer you can't just be born. Yeah, yeah, correct. At yeah. minimum she has to be nine, doesn't she? Correct, yes. So you know these three, four narrations you mentioned, are they uh, authentic or...? About what? All these narrations. The last few narrations you mentioned. Yeah. Demonstrating that, for example, she agree, she accepted Islam. Yeah. Within the first three years. Yeah, correct. Yes, it is. Yes. Or the yeah, other yeah. few. So are they all yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, inshallah, yes. Are you going to go through the narrations? Or is In just terms of chain, uh, actually, I do not have them. Yeah. But it is... Uh, uh, but what I'm relying is uh, uh, the, the scholars who are confirming it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just relying on their uh, confirmation of it. Right. Okay, so I did mention Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham. And Tahir bin Tahir al Hafiz, as well as Abu Zaid al Balkhi, all of them. Are they Sahih? Inshallah. So they are confirming it. So yeah. it is uh, because even the brothers who do not accept it, so they didn't touch the, the, the narration, but they did touch uh, that all of them uh, um, uh, narrations. Inshallah, I, I'm going to touch upon it right, right now. Touch, touch Wasn't that one of the points mentioned? Um, well, I read it in there was. Um, Basically, actually, they went even further, and they said that Ibn Hisham and Ibn Ishaq is not uh, reliable. Okay. So they said, for example, not like openly like that, but In, uh, Imam Zahabi confirmed that Ibn Ishaq is reliable. Yeah, and also Imam Zahabi did mention what's the reason of some of the scholars saying that Ibn Ishaq is not reliable because uh, Ibn Ishaq had some problem with uh, uh, Imam Malik. So Imam Malik said he's Dajjal that would eat, kick his uh, kick him off of Medina. Okay, but then Imam Zahib as well as Ibn Hajar Asqalani, they, they went back saying it was just uh, just temporary thing of Imam Malik. Right. Yeah, but uh, as well as, um, and also if Imam Malik says about some person that is not reliable, is not all the time is not reliable. Uh, do you understand? So it is something like, so uh, he said that it was just personal matter between Imam Malik and Ibn Ishaq, which nothing to do with the uh, academical authenticity of any of them two scholars. Right. Okay, so, so anyway. Um, <clears throat> Um, anyway, and also uh, uh, Abu Zaid al balkhi because he's not very famous uh, author, maybe for uh, the brothers who just uh, uh, who are talking about Ibn Ishaq and others. So um, uh, Abu Hayyan al Tawhidi, who passed away at four hundred fourth, so he says about him: "Inna hu lam yataqaddam lahu shabihun fi al-ansar al-ula, wa la yudhanu anna hu yujad lahu nazirun fi mustana fi dar." So anyway, he praised him a lot. Okay, said. Uh, there was no one who would equal Abu Zaid al balkhi in terms of his knowledge and etc. And I don't believe that who, uh, anyone uh, after him is going to be uh, equal to him. So he's praising him very uh, highly. So actually all of them scholars did confirm that Sayyid Aisha was one of the earliest uh, followers of uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, yeah. can you confirm, just like for us lay people, I Ibn Ish Hisham, yeah. when is that collected and written down compared to Bukhari. I know we don't just go with the earliest, yeah, yeah. but um, two things I wanted to ask you was, did Imam Malik mention anything in Muatta or anything about the age of Hazrat Aisha? Anything mentioned? And we I, have a, I don't know. Hmm. I don't have an idea. I'm sorry about that. About Imam Malik, yeah. And uh, Ibn Hisham, when is that written? Is it before Bukhari, after Bukhari? I, when? Ibn Hisham is actually, uh, I do not know exact, uh, exact dates, hmm. but actually, uh, something bet between him and uh, Ibn Ishaq is something about 50 years actually. Right. So within that period he did uh, 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 collected all of these narrations of Ibn Ishaq. So it's before Bukhari? Yeah, so something yeah. like that, yeah. Mm. But anyway, I think it's very easy to find out just by going to, to uh, 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 look into the dates also. Mm. It's, it's very easy, yeah. And Actually, also the, the brothers, yeah. You know, in terms of like Ibn Hisham or Ibn Ishaq being reliable, they could be reliable, but then the hadiths could be weak, couldn't they? Some of the narrations that they've got. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's coming right now. Yeah. So anyway, um, actually, the, the brothers uh, who were um, uh, criticizing this narration of Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham, uh, so they said that um, this statement only can mean only one thing. And uh, what is that thing? It is that um, uh, uh, Sayyid Aisha be, uh, uh, followed Rasulullah before Umar. So then, what did they do? Uh, Umar, they tried to push uh, 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 Islam of Umar, uh, uh, who very, you know, toward the end of the uh, mission in Mecca. So they said, Umar became Muslim uh, 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 in the year 9. 9 after the mission. So it is something about uh, 3 or four, 4 years before Rasulullah migrated. Okay. 
And uh, but uh, as you know, it is again. Uh, <coughs> so we need to just go to find out uh, because it's again uh, right now they are criticizing us for something that they did with us also because the most popular famous opinion that he was uh, uh, the 40th person to believe and it was um, uh, uh, so by him believing so the silent mission secret mission finished and that was at the end of their three do you understand so when we went against the popular opinion they uh, complained so now again they did the same thing Okay, but anyway, let's go. Uh, what what uh, it says? So actually, it's uh, 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 also uh, uh, mathematic like calculation. Okay, so in terms of um, uh, uh, Ibn Umar radiAllahu who's saying that he was young boy when uh, Umar radiAllahu became Muslim, and mm -hmm. then we all know that uh, uh, the age of uh, Ibn Umar was fourteen in the year of Uhud, which was the year two. Okay, so then after calculations, our brothers came to conclusion that uh, Umar radiallahu anhu, uh, it, it wasn't possible for him to become Muslim before year 9, after the prophethood. Okay, so, uh, so now, according to this, it could be, uh, so now the narration that said Aisha became Muslim before Umar, it is correct, even according to that uh, opinion. Okay, but if we just go back to the uh, narration, um, uh, so Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Isham, all of them, and also uh, Abu Zayd al-Balqi, all of them, they narrate, so they say one thing, that they say actually two things. So Aisha, uh, Allah, becoming Muslim before Umar, but not only that, but on top of that they say, فَكَانْ إِسْلَامُ هَوْلَى فِي ثَلَاثَ سِنِينَ So they became Muslim within three years. So then it doesn't matter if it's after Umar or before Umar. Okay, because... Uh, uh, it would support them if um, these three years wouldn't be there, you know? Hmm. So if it would be only about Umar radiallahu anhu. So she became Muslim before Umar, and Umar became Muslim at the year 9 after the mission, means it could be uh, just before him, which is, uh, even if she would be born, for example, whatever uh, age is, so uh, six years and nine years, it's still uh, workable, you know? Hmm. So, but in here it says three years, and on top of that, um, uh, so it was the year, three years, in which Rasulullah used to do secret da'wah. So there's no doubt that um, Rasulullah went into the house of Arqam Nabi Arqam at the end of the year three. So now, uh, Umar radiallahu when he became Muslim, it doesn't matter no more. Hmm. Does make sense? Yeah, you know, regarding Umar becoming Muslim, yeah. I, I might miss it, but you said. Uhud happened in the second year. Yeah. Of of after prophethood. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, and then uh, Ibn Umar was fourteen. Yeah. And then he said that uh, my father became a Muslim when I was a young boy. Boy, yes. Which means it'll be before that. Yes, correct. Yes. So. So it cannot be that Ibn Umar was three years old kid when uh, Umar radiallahu became Muslim. Yes. Even if you say let's say he was six, it would be seven years. Yeah, so it six, would... let's say six years, as a minimum, yes. But Uhud happened two years after Prophet. Yes. After Hijra, you mean? Do you, is it two years? After, not after Hijra, after, oh, after, after Hijra, Hijra, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen years after Prophet. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, just uh, because uh, brothers are proving, trying to prove that, even if uh, Aisha became Muslim before Umar, mm. so Umar didn't become Muslim uh, at the year three after the mission, but year nine. So mm. it gives enough time for Sayyid Aisha to be born and to accept, uh, to be born uh, after the prophethood and to reach the age of six, okay, uh, uh, for uh, uh, Rasulullah to marry her. So it's just, uh, but it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't work because um, narration doesn't say that it's only before Umar, but on top of that, within three years of, mm. of the mission. So now we don't look into the Umar and uh, other, other things. So it is a bit strange, yes. Sheikh, what did uh, uh, the sources you mentioned, Ibn Hisham, Ibn Ishaq, say about the uh, acceptance uh, when Hazrat Umar accepted Islam? Did yeah. they say he, it was also within the first three years, or was end of three years? So as as soon ah. as he became Muslim, uh, uh, he is the one who said, "Ya Rasulullah, if we are on the true path, so then why do we have to be afraid?" So he is the one by whom uh, Islam became uh, 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 like uh, uh, public. Right. Okay, and we say that it is the end of the year three. Right. Yeah. And then based on that narration, they say that 
So, for example, that as Omar didn't become an end of year three, but in reality, it's probably nine years. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But then, isn't it more likely it's going to be year five or six? What is? When it, uh, has Omar became Muslim? Because if uh, even Omar is fourteen, fifteen years after prophethood, no, no, and a young boy is about four or five years old, isn't he? Or six, five, about five, six years old. Yeah. So he'd be nine years before that. Yeah. Which so, would make it about because brothers are trying to use it as proof for them. You know, mm-hmm. now you're disproving them, so I want to leave it with them. You know. So uh, it, are you saying it doesn't add up because when? Um, if uh, if the son of Umar was 14 or 15, yeah. 14 at the time of Uhud. Which is 15 years after prophethood. And when uh, Hazrat Umar accepted about 14 years ago, it's difficult for him to be 5 or 6 when he witnessed this acceptance. Yeah, no, because then that would make him 2, wouldn't it? Mm. So that agrees with their point that it wasn't 3, but it must have been after that. But then how much after that? So you'd say a young boy, how old would he be? You'd say it's about something about 6, six yeah. Yeah, so then that would make it... Um, uh, four or five years after prophethood, hmm. which would in essence still make uh, Aisha nine when uh, Ohud happened. Yeah. All right. So he would be 14. So cause for example, if he's 14, 15 years afterwards, so it means that he's. If he's definitely 14 at Ohud, correct, and Ohud yes. is uh, 14 years after prophethood, yeah, correct, then yes. at the time of prophethood he's yeah, like zero. Yeah. yeah. And then if Hazrat Umar accepted Islam in, uh, let's say, first three years, then uh, Ibn Umar is only free, maximum. Yeah. yeah. So, so it cannot be. that Ibn Umar cannot say that I was a uh, 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 ghulam. Ghulam is young boy. Hmm. Okay, so you cannot say two, three years old kid, boy, you know, young boy, Ghulam, you cannot. So it is something about uh, uh, six, seven years old. Okay, so if you will make it like that, definitely it will prove their point. But the point in here is um, uh, Ibn Hisham and uh, Balkhi, all of them are mentioning that um, uh, uh, not only she became Muslim before Umar, but not, not, not only that, but within three years. Oh. Now we don't care when Umar became Muslim, Na- ninth year or even after Hijrah, so what? It's irrelevant. Because yeah. in here it says within three years, before Rasulullah went into the house of Arqam and Abi Arqam, which, which happened uh, at the end of the year three. So now we don't care when Umar became Muslim. So it does make sense. No, so you know this narration here, is this a he as well? So, so that's what I think here. Yeah. So if it is, then that contradicts the other one, doesn't it? So, so, so that's what I'm... So the so so whole, whole point in here, I'm trying to say that it's very non-accurate to say that she was exactly at the age of 9 or 20 or... Do you want, yes, so I'm saying uh, yeah. narrations are conflicting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so and also... Um, uh, um, and these issues, we mentioned them all. Uh, and also, uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, the brothers mentioned about the difference between say the uh, Asma and say the Aisha. Okay, so uh, uh, Ibn Hajar al did confirm in his book in uh, um, in, in Tadhib that uh, the difference between them is actually ten years. Okay, and then um, um, and also uh, it says that. Uh, um, so it, 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 it has been confirmed by, by uh, several sources. So, for example, the, the, the main thing, the main person who is uh, uh, making that statement is um, Ibn uh, Abi Zinad. Okay, and then brothers try to prove that Ibn Abi Zinad is non reliable. Okay, and then they uh, mention um, uh, some of the issues. Anyway, just before we go to that uh, issue about Ibn Abi Zinad, uh, uh, Ibn Hibatullah uh, mentioned that um, uh, uh, Abu Nu'aym al Asbahani. Uh, mentioned that uh, say the Aisha was born and sorry say the Asma was born when uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq was uh, 20 years old 20 years old and then um, Ibn Hajar confirmed that the difference between uh, say the Asma and say the Aisha is 10 years Zahabi because he is going with the most popular opinion but yet we will go to you know Zahabi so he says Bidata Ashara so the difference between Asma and Aisha is um, at several after ten, several years after ten. Bidah means something between three to nine. So let's say, as a maximum, it could be nineteen years. 
Okay, so now if we go with uh, Abu Nuaim, uh, who said that say that Asma wa was born when Abu Bakr was twenty years old. So, uh, according to uh, Ibn Hajar, uh, say that Asha will be born when Abu Bakr was thirty. Hmm. Amara right? after years, ten years, yeah. and according to Zahabi, as a maximum, uh, he will be thirty-nine because bizat Asha, right. several years after ten, yeah. as a maximum. Okay, so if let's go with uh, with Zahabi, forget about Ibn Hajar, Zahabi. So if uh, Abu Bakr was um, uh, for, uh, thirty-nine, and what's the difference between Abu Bakr and Rasulullah It is two, two years. Two years. Yeah. Means Rasulullah by, by that age was 40, 42. 40, yeah. 42 years old. Okay? So according to this narration, according to this narration, what's going to be the age of Sayyida Aisha when uh, Rasulullah married her one year before Hijrah? Uh, 13 years. Uh, uh, so Rasulullah migrated when he was um, 53. Hmm. Me, uh, and Sayyida Aisha was born when uh, Rasulullah was. Uh, 41 because Abu Bakr thir 39 so yeah. Rasulullah 41 41 so what will be the age? 11 12, 12 so it's again not matching you know it, it doesn't match with the uh, uh, 6 9 as well as with the previous point you know uh, Umar and Ibn Umar and uh, Arqam Nabi uh, uh, Arqam it's not matching with any of them but, but Sheikh what if they say that um, because it means 10 and a bit so what if it means 10 and just 3 instead of 9, so it just means 13? No, it's, it's even worse, so I'm and trying to help that out that narration. Older, Does it make it worse? That yeah, yeah. Than 18? Oh, yeah, because yeah. Abu Bakr would only be 40, yeah, it would be 33. Be 30, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. So, no, no, I'm trying to help out the brothers, you know? Mm. So, Bid'a means between 3 to 9. Right. Okay, so let's oh, say, yeah, yeah. I'm so trying to help them. Worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, see. even if I'm trying to help, he's not helping, you know? Right. It's controversial. Mm. controversial. Yeah, you know that has Umar one. I got mixed up there, but that's what I was about to say, right? Mm. That it actually makes has Aisha at least twelve or thirteen. In no, that no, no, no. So it's not mar yeah. working, you know. Even that. Good, no, yeah. And forget about that. Yeah. But narration says within three years, for three years. Yeah. So now forget about Umar. But let's say even if you looked at the has Umar at least, that yeah. makes her at least twelve or thirteen as well. Yes, yes, yes. Because, Why is that? Because if uh, uh, Ibn Umar is born when Rasulullah mm. became a prophet, mm. right? Mm. And it's saying that he was a child when his Umar became. No, no, no. Yeah, ac according to this, uh, uh, Hijrah before before Hijrah. No, so after the prophethood, uh, uh, ninth after the prophethood, then when uh, Umar became Muslim. So according to that, after the prophethood, third year after the prophethood, Ibn Umar was born. No, no. But what I mean is, so for example, it's agreed upon that in Uhud he was fourteen. Yeah, yeah. So it means that he was born yeah. when Rasulullah became a prophet. Yeah, yeah. Or and some, was, yeah, correct. So, yeah. And if he was a young boy when as Umar became a uh, Muslim. No, no, now, do not support this point, you know. Try to support the brothers. No, no, I'm saying it based on things I thought their point was actually right first. But, yeah. for example, five. So it means he's about five or six. Yeah. Roughly, when Hazrat Umar became pro uh, a Muslim, yeah, because mm. he said I'm a young boy. Mm. So you're looking at when uh, Rasulullah was so forty-five-ish. Mm. Rasulullah was about forty-five. And then, this, it's agreed upon that Hazrat Aisha became a Muslim beforehand. Yeah, before Umar. Before Hazrat before Umar. Umar, yeah. And to be a Muslim, you need to be roughly about four or five. No, no, no. Over that four years old kid, hmm. you will say, oh, he became. Yeah, but let's say a worst case scenario, you have to be four or five. Right? No, no, six as a minimum. Okay, yeah. so six. But let's yeah. just say four or five, just to help help out the other. We're million. we're doing some bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then that would mean that she was born when. It was prophethood as well. Yeah, yeah. Which would mean that she'd be at the minimum twelve. Of yes. So you have to ignore all of that and to say that when uh, Abu Bakr, when Umar became Muslim, uh, Ibn Umar was six years, just to help out that. So then we say even so then, what? Even then, it, it, it doesn't. Then. No, no. So it's, it uh, it makes the um, controversial narrations even more and more. Hmm. Do you understand? So so it's not matching. This is not matching with that. And also, uh, why we cannot go with the literal uh, meaning of what uh, say the Aisha says? So I say, um, for example, now in our time, if you ask someone's age, straight away he will know. Because on daily basis, he will just look at the watch, you know. Okay, so today I am, okay, uh, 40 years old and uh, 60 hours and 3 minutes and 1 second. Mm. But in that time, it wasn't that um, common to think oh, how old I am, you know. But people would rel relate it to the very important events. Uh, okay, so uh, it's common with our grandparents as well, isn't it? If you ask exactly, them, yeah, yeah. they'd say, "Oh, it was two years yeah. after." 
the war in Pakistan or one year mm -hmm. before yeah. it or something like that. Yeah. And also, the another narration also, um, Hisham bin Urwa, and uh, Hisham bin Urwa, who is Hisham bin Urwa? The uh, nephew of, nephew of no, say the Aisha, say yeah. Dasma. So Hisham bin Urwa <coughs> did confirm that uh, uh, say Dasma, when she passed away, she was 100 years old. Am I right? And, uh, and on top of that, he said that Hisham bin Urwa said that when she died, she had all of her teeth on. Hmm. Okay, and uh, uh, relatives they know uh, each other better than other people. Am I right? Hmm. Okay, and then um, so uh, let's say that uh, I say that uh, because uh, Imam Zahabi actually in here it is the point if if you remember before that. Um, uh, uh, the, the difference between say the Asma being ten or several after ten, so that uh, where uh, Imam Zahabi actually uh, makes some, you can say, uh, um, uh, statements. So anyway, Imam Zahabi says, uh, quotes from uh, uh, Ibn Abi Zinad that um, uh, say the Asma, uh, say the uh, Asma was ten years older than say the Aisha, and after that he says that. So according to this narration, the difference between uh, them being ten. So it means that when Sayyida Asma passed away, she was um, uh, only 91 years old. Yeah. Okay, J I just to... I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, no, because uh, Imam Zahabi now is going with the most popular opinion. Mm. Okay, but after that he says, but Hisham bin Urwa did say that she, uh, she uh, passed away when, uh, he was, uh, when uh, uh, she was 100 years old, mm. Sayyida Asma. And Hisham bin Urwa is the same person who narrates the hadith in Bukhari. Yeah, correct, yeah, it is the same person, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Hisham bin Urwa is the, the nephew of, uh, um, uh, of uh, Sayyid uh, Aisha, Sayyid Asma. Um, so anyway, it's, uh, each time when you go to look into a new narration, about the age of said it's getting even worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So from here, it's but it is very natural. It's very understandable because the age and the years in that time it was not very uh, like uh, common to think. You know, mm -hmm. for example, uh, in the Roman Empire or for example Byzantium, it was very important for them to know the dates. Right. Okay, but in uh, Arabian Peninsula, it was not that um, very common to know what's the date and what's the time, etc. Okay, so so that will explain why do we have so controversial narrations mm. about the events? Okay, so it is uh, it is very understandable because the people who can um, who uh, count their age by the events and incidents, so that what happens actually, because uh, as we mentioned about Rasulullah, so there is no agreed upon opinion about Rasulullah. So, so what do you think about anyone else? Mm. So there will not be any um, uh, um, uh, accurate understandings. So anyway, said um, Asma and Imam Zahabi. But anyway, let's go back to the to the main, main issue. So it is in um, Tarikh al-Islam in my um, uh, electronic copy. Um, it is uh, uh, volume three, uh, page number three hundred fifty-four. It is Tarikh al-Islam of Imam Zahabi. Anyway, in terms of um, okay, so forget about everything. So she was. Um, we will calculate both of the cases. So. If she was 100 years when she passed away. So when exactly did she uh, pass away? It is about few weeks or few months as a maximum, two months as a maximum, after the murder of her son, Abdullah bin Zubair. And if you remember, when Hajjaj came and destroyed Mecca and Medina and when he killed him. Okay. So then, question, when exactly uh, Abdullah bin Zubair was killed? Year uh, 73 Hijra. Year 73 Hijra. So now uh, let's calculate it now. Again, if you can just help us out. So if she was 100 years old when she died and it was 73rd of Hijra. So then uh, before how many, how long she was born before Rasulullah started the mission? So 27 before Hijra. 27 before Hijra, and then 13 will be taken off, mm. 14 years before 
before the prophethood. Mm. Okay, and then difference between them uh, uh, ten years. Okay, so then it will be. So four. So Hazadai should be born. If she's born 14 years before prophethood, yeah. the earliest as that Aisha can be born is 4 years yeah. before prophethood. Four years. Which would make her 16 in there. Sorry? <coughs> which would make her Aisha 16 when she got married. Okay, so 4 years, correct. 4 years, yeah. But uh, let, let's go with the, uh, with the narration of um, Imam Dhahabi. Bid'a means something between 3 to 9. Hmm. Ten, several years means between 3 to 9. After 10, because Imam Zahabi is still supporting that opinion, so just to bring it closer. So let's say 19 years. 19 years after Sayyid Asma. So if Sayyid Asma was born uh, 14 years before the, before the prophethood, okay, Sayyid Aisha was born 19 years after her, means uh, fifth of the uh, prophethood. Okay, so this narration may bring it closer because. Um, uh, uh, six years, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, five years after the prophethood, mm. okay, and uh, so you will just, it is 13 years in Mecca, so you will take off, so she will be eight years, okay, so it's not coming close, so it is still not exactly the mm. uh, accurate number. Bidata Ashara means that, you know, mm. okay, so eight at the time of marriage, marriage, and means moving. three years after that. So it's a big difference. So it, it is yeah. still a difference, you know. So it's not coming. It's not six. It so so even six, when yeah. Imam Zahabi is helping out that group, it's not coming close, you know. Mm. It is still, and also I'm, uh, Imam Zahabi helped out, and I'm also helping, mm. because Bizan doesn't mean nineteen. Mm. It, it might mean nineteen. Between three to nine. Could mean thirteen. It could, it could 19, thirteen, yeah. yeah. Uh. Doesn't mean, so it's not coming, you know. Mm. Okay. As well as I found narrations in which it's, in which it says that. When she married Rasulullah, she was only four. In for Hazrat Aisha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it adding the bits to to make it to six, isn't it? None, none, yeah, yeah. It's not that, but uh, it says accurately oh. she was p four, not by calculation, but she m makes statement. But I think it's weak narration. She says I was four, and then seven when she. Ah, is there such a weak narration? Yeah, yeah. It, it is that, but it's not by calculation. It, it is not by calculation. Where, where is, do you know where this is found? Or? I, I actually saw this narration a uh, couple of days ago, but I didn't take it. Oh, because, right. just because it was. Mm. But anyway, inshallah, I will, uh, I will uh, email it to you, inshallah, mm. if it's uh, very important. So, so that, is, uh, that is strange, actually. Uh, also, there is another uh, issue in which uh, Abu Naim also mentions that uh, Sayyidah Asma uh, was born um, uh, seven. Uh, 27 years before the migration, Abu Naim al Asbahani mentioned that. So, 27 years before the migration. So, then what will be the age of uh, uh, Sayyidah uh, Asma when, uh, uh, before the prophethood, in the time of prophethood? So, she's born 27 years yeah. before the migration. Yeah, yeah. So, it is 14. 14 years. So, it is again the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, then, age of Sayyidah Aisha will be 8 in the marriage, in the, and then uh, something about. Uh, um, uh, 11 when she uh, moved in. So it is again, uh, it's not matching. Mm. Yeah, so, um, so you're getting many strange numbers. It, it, is, going from it, it is conflicting 18 with each other. To 12 yeah, yeah, to exactly. 20, yeah. right? Yeah, because even it came to 28 at one time. Yeah, it is coming, it is still oh, there. Right. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. And also, uh, and then brothers just responded to this uh, statement saying all of that is about the difference being 10 years. So, okay, forget about 10, even 19 didn't work also. Am I right? As Imam Zahabi <coughs> mentioned that Bidat Asher didn't work also. Mm. Okay, but let's forget. So then brothers said that it's about uh, 19, uh, I mean, the, the difference between them being 10 is narrated from Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Zinad. And then they say that uh, scholars actually, they disagreed about him. Some said uh, that he is weak. Okay, so, uh, and for example, uh, Imam Ahmad, so it is in uh, Tahzib al Tahzib. Okay, so Imam Ahmad says about him, Multarab al Hadith means. In his narrations, there is uh, so uh, once he says one thing and the second time he says something different. You know, that's the meaning of Mustarab al Hadith. And Ibn Ma'in said about him, "Lese min man yuhtaju yuhtaju bihi ashab al Hadith." Means uh, scholars of Hadith they do not use him as proof. Okay, as well as uh, Ibn uh, Ali Ibn al Madini says 
ما حدث بالمدينة فهو صحيح whatever he did narrate in Medina that is authentic okay and then uh, he says وما حدث ببغداد أفسده البغداديون so he says but whatever he narrated in Baghdad so that is actually non authentic so it's just uh, going uh, on that level and anyway uh, after that uh, uh, Abu Hatim says about him يُكْتَبُ حَدِيثُهُ وَلَا يُحْتَجُ بِهِ So his hadith will be, um, uh, it's, uh, will be written, but you cannot narrate it as uh, a backing up something, as a proof. As well as Imam Nasa, he said about him, about the same person, لَا يُحْتَجُ بِحَدِيثِ You cannot use his narration as a proof. As well as Abu Ahmad ibn Ali, he says, وَبَعْضُ مَا يَرْوِيهِ لَا يُتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Means some of whatever he narrated, you cannot uh, actually use him as a proof. And after that, uh, brothers mentioned that, uh, and also because Imam Tirmidhi uh, 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 declared about the narration of the same person, Abdul Rahman Nabi Zinat, that it is authentic. Okay, so just to disprove that the difference between them was 10 years, they have to prove that uh, Ibn Abi Zinat is weak. Mm. Okay, but then what about Tirmidhi saying that uh, his uh, hadith is authentic? So brothers say that uh, um, uh, after all of this uh, 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 proofs that uh, Ibn Abi Zinad is weak, we cannot take what uh, Tirmidhi says. Okay, and I'm not the expert of hadith, but um, I teach uh, uh, Mustalah al-Hadith. We do have something in Mustalah al-Hadith, which is al uh, al Mubham La Yuqbal. It's a very famous uh, statement. They say, the non-explained, uh, non-clarified uh, criticizing is not accepted. So, for example, I will say, okay, Bukhari is weak. Okay, for example, Abdul Rahman ibn, uh, uh, for example, Al-Araj, Abdul Rahman ibn Hurmuz is weak. Mm -hmm. So, this is non-explained. Why is he weak? Okay, so I have to say, because he actually um, uh, gets paid for the, for the narration. Okay, because if I say that he is weak, so maybe I am saying that he is weak according to my own principles. Hmm. So maybe uh, what I consider as weakness, other scholars may not consider. So that's why they said non-clarified uh, uh, criticizing of someone is not uh, accepted. Right. Okay, so if we go back to what the scholars of Hadith said about Ibn Abi Zinad, you very uh, hardly uh, understand that they are criticizing him badly. But for example, what he says, um, Imam Ahmad says, Multarab al Hadith. Okay, it's not, uh, so, uh, it's not very deep uh, criticizing, for example, saying he's a liar. Okay, mm -hmm. or, the, or another thing. Um, uh, for example, uh, uh, Ali ibn al-Madini is saying, al-Madina sahih. Whatever he narrated in Medina is authentic. And whatever he narrated in Baghdad is non-authentic. Is he criticizing? What do you think? Uh, well, he's just making a qualification. He's not saying, yeah, it's all wrong. He's saying, yeah, yeah. some... So you cannot yeah. use this statement saying that he's weak. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's all. another thing. What... Um, um, uh, uh, what would the logic be behind that, that anything in the race of Medina is not weak, everything in the race outside is? So maybe, uh, maybe during the journey, maybe he lost one of his uh, books, maybe, and after that he tried to uh, uh, restore it from his memory. But in Medina, he had all of his uh, libraries there, you know. It could be many reasons for that, you know. So it's not uh, sorry in terms of criticizing or disproving his authenticity. Or, for example, um, uh, for example, Ahmad ibn Adi saying, some of his narrations, you cannot follow that, for example. It's not also saying that he's weak. Uh, do you understand? Mm -hmm. And also, he says, Nasai says, لا يحتج بحديثه. You cannot use his hadith as a proof. We say, non-clarified. Why? Why you cannot use it? Mm -hmm. And the principle in Mustafa hadith, if someone is criticizing the narrator, and he doesn't explain why is he weak, we do not accept that. Right, even but, if it's unnecessary. No, so what? They have to explain. But because it could, it could be that something that Nasai considers as weakness, other scholars do not consider. Right. So that's one thing. But what about if someone says that he is authentic, but that doesn't explain why is he authentic? We say we do accept it, because um, uh, uh, to prove that he's authentic, there are um, so many conditions, and it is not uh, reasonable to mention why is he authentic. You know. Okay, so Imam Tirmidhi using him as a proof, as a hujjah, that is in itself is enough to... But anyway, forget about uh, the narration of uh, 10 years. 
even if we go with what Imam Zahabi says, that it was the difference was bid'at ashar, so even that didn't work, you know. Hmm. Okay, so it is a bit strange. But anyway, the most important thing is that um, the narrations are not matching with each other. So that's the most important thing. Uh, okay, so then uh, we did mention um, these uh, issues about um, uh, Sayyid Aisha and Sayyid Fatima. Um, and also, um, if you remember the last week, also we have spoken about um, uh, Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Aisha and uh, uh, Usama bin Zayd. Hmm. Usama bin Zaid, if you remember. And Usama bin Zaid uh, is the adopted grandson of Rasulullah He's hmm. very famous, yeah. And also, his title is Hib al Hib ibn al Hib, Beloved sure. One, uh, Son of Beloved. This is very famous. And then, uh, um, uh, Usama bin Zaid, radiallahu anhu, was something between uh, 18 to 19 years old when he passed away. Okay, it is non disagreed upon issue. Okay, so it is. In my in my uh, version in my Bidai wa Nihaya copy, it is the electronic copy. It is the uh, uh, volume number eight, page number uh, sixty-seven, saying that when Rasulullah sallam passed away, uh, Usama bin Zaid was um, nineteen years old. Okay, but anyway, and then uh, we have uh, <coughs> um, we have a narration in which uh, Sayyid Aisha says. أمرني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن أغسل وجه أسامة وهو صبي قالت وما وما ولدت ولا أعرف كيف يغسل الصبيان. So then he she says رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ordered me to wash the face of أسامة. Okay. وهو صبي when he was kid. Okay. That is one thing. So according to the what brother says six nine. So said Aisha when رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away she was Eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Means Rasulullah Islam is ordering Sayyid Aisha to wash the face of someone who was on her age or one year older to wash his face. Okay. And then she says, in that time she he was kid. And after that she carries on. Wama walatu. I didn't give birth yet. Wala arifu kefe. So I don't know how kids are washed. Hmm. Does make sense? For me, it does not make sense. You know. So if so in that time she will be something about thirteen years old, and he will be thirteen or fourteen years old. Hmm. So if she's saying she does, she hasn't given birth. So she doesn't know how to uh, how to mean. Wash a baby. Yeah, yeah. Means uh, there have to be the difference of mother and son, you know. Hmm. As well as she is saying he was yet kid in that time. Right. She was kid also according to the the narrative uh, six uh, nine narration, you know. Hmm. Okay, so it doesn't. It doesn't make sense, actually. Yeah. Is Osama bin Zaid the son of Zaid bin Haritha? Right. Same one, yeah. So he was a Sahaba who was black and a foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's it, it, one it, it, of the same black Sahaba. Yeah, correct, okay. yeah. Because his mother was black. Right, yeah. yeah. So it is, uh, it is uh, actually, uh, yeah, uh, it is not very uh, uh, literal. But it makes sense. Hmm. So, a uh, uh, girl uh, at the age of 13 was ordered to wash the face of the boy aged 14. One year older than her, or on the same age. And then after that she says, in that time he was a kid. Hmm. She, she was a kid also. Hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense. As well as she says, I, 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 I didn't have a baby. I didn't give birth of a baby. So I don't know how uh, kids are uh, uh, washed. Hmm. You wouldn't say that about a teenager, really. Exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, exactly. Unless if there would be difference, big, big difference, sufficient difference. Mm. But if they are in the same time, she cannot say, I didn't give birth yet. But she would say, I didn't have a, a, a brother. Mm. Uh, do you know? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's... Um, and also, um, uh, there is a narration in... Uh, 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 Muslim Ahmad, as far as I remember, I do have the thing. So um, once uh, uh, Sayyid Aisha says, "Arad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam an yamsah mukhata Usama," فقلت دعني حتى أكون أنا التي أفعل. فقال عائشة فقال يا عائشة أحبيه فإني أحبه. So then uh, Sayyid Aisha says, "Once Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam just wanted to wash away, do you know the." Um, uh, uh, maybe like uh, Usama bin Zaid maybe sneezed. Hmm. So Rasulullah wants to just wash it away, wash it off. So Sayyidah, she says, yeah, Rasulullah, let me do it. Okay. 
So then uh, it will not be something as uh, same aged people, you know. And after that, uh, Rasulullah SAW said, Ya Aisha, Aisha, love him because I do love him. Mm. Okay, so it's, uh, um, it again uh, shows that uh, there is some strange uh, uh, controversiality actually. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying like um, he had a runny nose? Yeah, yeah. And has it, uh, Rasulullah told Wanted has to it wash like, it away. That would be very strange for a teenager anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah, like, exactly. Or yeah. even 12 year old. Or... Yeah, yeah. Especially if they're same, same age or a boy is uh, one year older. Because mostly like a, a, a kid would just clean his own nose unless it's quite young, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah. There's no such thing in funny question, but in that culture that people don't... It's very no, strange. No, for example, uh, Usain bin Zayed himself, Okay, so he uh, was leader by, by the age of 17, 17 18, mm -hmm. who was leading whole army against the Roman Empire. Yeah. So do you think that at the age of 20, he will need someone to wash off his, uh, uh, his uh, nose? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so unless if he was a baby, kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, means there should be some big difference between Sayyidah Aisha and... Um, Usama. It's not that uh, uh, Usama, Usama was one year older than Aisha and then Rasulullah uh, said Aisha will go to wash away his uh, face, you know. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit strange actually. And also that uh, narration which is in Tawbari and Ibn Kathir about um, um, say the Aisha even before Rasulullah made proposal, she uh, was engaged, okay. Uh, she was already engaged to um, uh, Mutaim bin Adi, his son Jubair Muslim, and all of them, uh, Mutaim bin Adi, he was kafir and he died as a kafir. Okay, and the most beloved, uh, you can say, a companion of Rasulullah, marrying off his uh, daughter to a non believer. It's a bit strange, actually. Yeah. Uh, but the answer I, I've heard for this is they said it's uh, very common for people to be married even before birth. So, like, if I say, if I say I'm going to marry my daughter to your son, yeah. if I have a daughter, yeah, yeah. in case. Yeah, yeah. So they said no, it's no, that kind of... No, no, my point is not that, but still I want to answer to it. Because in here it uh, says that if, we will marry off, uh, if I will marry off my son to your daughter, who, who is still there. Okay, forget about that point, but the most important uh, issue is the, beloved, the most beloved companion of Rasulullah Islam marrying off his daughter to non-Muslim. So what I'm trying to emphasize, this could happen only before Abu Bakr followed Rasulullah on belief. Hmm. So, um, I mean, I, I, to me, I, also when I heard this, it was yeah. a very, um, uh, to me it was very shocking that uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr, he's so strong, and he's, yeah. we don't believe he was ever a non-Muslim, as, 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 yeah, uh, yes. um, as you said. Uh, for him to do that to an idolater, yeah. not even a Jew or a Christian, yeah, yeah. very strange. Yeah, yeah. But uh, then um, they mentioned that even, uh, was it Hazrat Zainab? Yeah. The, the, one of the daughters of Rasulullah yeah, yeah. was married to a non-Muslim. Yeah, yeah. And so Correct, they yes. said, why did Rasulullah marry his daughter to idolater yeah. before coming of Islam? No, it is, it is two different things. I mm. do not mean that. I mean that, uh, so when message came, Okay, just to st help up the brothers, hmm. uh, so uh, it, this engagement should happen after Abu Bakr uh, becoming Muslim. Hmm. For us to say that Sayyidah Aisha was six when she married Rasulullah oh. But what I'm trying to say, even after the revelation, Abu Bakr is still insisting to uh, marry off his daughter to the idol worshipper, it doesn't make a sense. Right. Especially we know how Abu Bakr is jealous for the Prophet and his message. Right. It doesn't make sense. So that is my point. So if Aisha was so you, you young... You touch it, yes. Yeah, so you're not saying whether it happened. So, so I say it could happen only, only before, before Abu Bakr uh, uh, followed Rasulullah uh, So before yeah. prophethood, it, it prophet makes sense yeah. to marry your daughter. Yeah, yeah. To her, but or after, afterward, afterward he was so closely engaged with the prophet hmm. and he was so jealous for the message. Of, so when he was beaten up, hmm. do you remember? And he felt unconscious. When he woke up, what he said first thing? Where is, uh, where is Abu al-Qasim? Hmm. Do you remember? Yeah. So he was so closely engaged with the Prophet and even after that, him marrying off his daughter uh, to, uh, 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 to idol worshipper. And according to the brothers who say that it is 6-9, this event of marrying off to non-Muslim took place after him being beaten up by the same people. Hmm. Because being beaten up, it happened uh, at the end of the year 3. 
where Sayyid Aisha was not born, uh, uh, born yet, right. you know? Mm. So after him being beaten up, Sayyid Aisha was born, and then he did marry off his daughter to the same people, okay, who insulted the Prophet, who did beat him up. So it does make sense, you know? So the, the only way to make it... Uh, to happen only before the Prophethood. Right. Oh, yeah, so but, but I know what they will say. They will just say, this was arranged before she was born. That's because I've heard them say that. I, I, I'm not saying I believe it, oh, but okay, they, okay. they will say, um, so there is even such an engagement like me and... Uh, it, it, could, it could happen, yes. Yeah. So it we, could happen. We will say our children will marry yeah, each other yeah. no so, matter so, what. So, yeah. so uh, our, what we say is the literal meaning of what uh, uh, Hadith states. But what they are saying, it is our own extra conclusion. For that we need extra proof. Uh, do you understand? So so it's, it's the same it's a, thing. It's, it's, not, uh, it's a deduction. It, because that is possibility. possibility. But what we say is literal meaning. It's just engagement. It doesn't say anything yeah, about yeah. before. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so, so it's there also. Um. Just incidentally, Sheikh, is that a thing in Islam that people can arrange marriage even before? Like at the moment, is there such a thing in fiqh? Like I can say my son will marry your uh, daughter. And even though I don't have a son, and maybe you don't have an... It that... is only promise. It's just a promise, isn't promise, it? Right, yeah. okay. So it's not like they're born and then... No, they're... after the birth, birth, uh, that will be the, the official oh, engagement. I see. Okay. But before that, just promise. Right. Yeah. So that's why what they're saying, it could be metaphorically. Right. So now they became a Shari essentially. Okay, so it'll be like uh, Tawil of this. Tawil, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, that is uh, this. And also, and also, for me, even if she was uh, six or nine, for me it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Because Rasulullah is the best creature, and Rasulullah, whatever he does, for me, that's the principle. Not the principle what I know, and why Prophet is not following, the, he's not that, but whatever Prophet does, that's the principle for me. So I'm not ashamed. Even if uh, what they say is right, so, so what? Rasulullah is the best person, and he knows what he's doing. So I don't have a problem with that. Okay, mm -hmm. but what I try to uh, say in here that, because your question, very first question, is it mutawatir or is there a difference of opinion? So that was the question. So answer came, it's, first of all, not, it, there is no any tawatur, hmm. 100%. But is it agreed upon? So these other narrations means there is no agreed upon thing. Hmm. But there is popular, most popular. Okay. And also in the very beginning of the lecture I said that some opinion being the most popular doesn't necessarily mean that it is the most reliable. And I gave an example for that. And also, for example, um, in terms of, um, uh, for example, the, the differences in the age, so just I brought some of the, uh, no, for example, it's in terms of Umar ibn Khattab and uh, Sayyid Umm Gulthum, Sayyid Zainab, daughter of uh, Ali, is very famous, as well as the difference between Sayyid Maryam, when she was engaged, she was 12 years old, and uh, when, um, uh, but uh, the uh, uh, Joseph, okay, to whom she was engaged, uh, he was um, 89 years old, Amara, so the difference is going to be 77 years between Sayyidah Maryam and Joseph, according mm -hmm. to the, the Gospels, okay, and I do have the reference for that, uh, so it is 77 years old, mm -hmm. I think that's I mean, 77 early, differences, sorry? It's yes. in one of the Christian histories, it's uh, mentioned, what encyclopedia is it? Catholic Encyclopedia. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, so anyway, um, so, so that's, the, that's the main things about the Sayyidah Aisha, and also, the brothers just saying that um, in terms of the uh, linguistic thing, mm. okay, so we did catch on them uh, their linguistic thing in terms of filja mm. hilia. So they did catch some issue on our linguistic thing. So anyway, so in terms of it was a new one been to sit in wa bana b wa ana been to tisain. So bana b. So the they are saying that bana b means to have a sex. Hmm. Okay, so the uh, if we take the the meaning of what she's trying to say that uh, Rasulullah married me when I was six and he had sex with me when I was nine. Yeah, it is first of all it does make sense for me, you know. But anyway, so banabi does it mean uh, having sex? Okay, so uh, I said in in the last week that banabi means they are starting uh, the uh, uh, journey of of the like married journey, you know, means they're living together. So that is, I still insist on that point. But um, uh, does it mean that they had sex? It doesn't mean, as well as it does not mean that they didn't have. Hmm. Okay, okay, so 
Um, and also, the, the proof of that is um, Mukhtar al-Sahah of Razi. It's an authentic dictionary book, it's very famous. Um, so then, um, Bana, um, so he says, Bana ala ahlihi yabni. Okay, means zaffaha, means made zafaf. Okay, so what's the meaning of zafaf? Zafaf uh, from the same Mukhtar al-Sahah means zaffa al-arusu ila zawjiha. Oh, zuffa al-arusu ila zawjiha means um, uh, um, the, the uh, uh, lady has been moved or brought to the house of the husband. Zafaf, what's the zafaf? It's very famous. Just go and Arabian say, what do you mean by zafaf? Do you mean sex or what do you mean? Okay, so the meaning of bana ala ahlihi means zaffaha. Okay, so that's the meaning. Okay, uh, and also, um, uh, and also, in terms of, uh, um, uh, inshallah, I'm going to mention some other quotations about that. And also, the linguistic thing, according to the, uh, according to the, some of the uh, scholars of the um, uh, Arabic language, Johar is a very famous scholar. So he says it's non fusha to say bana biha. You have to say bana aleha because it's coming from, uh, okay. Uh, but then um, uh, the scholars from the other side they replied to this point saying, uh, but say the Aisha, she is the most uh, uh, strongest Arabian speaker. She said bana biha, so it means that it is authentic to say bana biha, okay. Mm -hmm. But then we say we are talking about this narration being reliable or no or non-reliable, so you cannot quote it as a proof. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bana aleha because it's coming from like uh, setting up, uh, setting the 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 do you know the the house or the tent of the marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you cannot say bana biha, but bana aleha. Right. Did you understand? So, so yes. Yeah. But does bana bin bina uh, even mean sex? Sorry. Is there agreement where even with other wording, bana biha? Literal meaning. Mean? Literal meaning is building. Right, so even okay, that so doesn't mean sex. Not building. So it's, it would mean sex non-literally, but ashari way uh, meaning. Oh. Better way, you know? So if because literal mean, direct meaning is to build house or to build something. So both of them don't mean sex. So what's the, well, why are we arguing? So it's, bana ilayha yeah, doesn't yeah. mean sex and yeah, yeah. bano, uh, have, you know, both no, don't mean sex. No, no, it's very strange because brothers are insisting that if you do not accept what we are saying, then you are enemy of Islam. Means. <laughs> I have to believe, so one of the questions in your Mulkham, Allah will ask me, did your Prophet have a sex with Aisha when she was nine? So that was, they're trying to emphasize one, which is very, it's very strange. silly. It's yeah. very, so Bana Biha doesn't mean to have sex, but to live together. Um, but uh, uh, not only that, <coughs> not only that, but just, uh, uh, I want to quote from the same book which I mentioned before. It is Kitab al-Bad wa Tariq of Balkhi. Do you remember that scholar who passed away, um, uh, Abu Zaid al-Balkhi, who passed away 322nd uh, of Hijrah. So he's speaking about the same event. Okay, so he comes back and to, uh, to back up the position or to uh, uh, quote the uh, statement about 6 and 9. What does he say? So he says, Aisha, Tazawajaha bimakka qabla al hijra bisana. So uh, Balkhi says, Sayyidah Aisha, Rasulullah Islam married her in Mecca one year before the hijra. Wa hiya ibna tu sabai sinin. And she was seven years old. Wa bana biha bil madina. And then he made bina uh, with Sayyidah Aisha in Madina. And then he says, Wa dakhala biha ba'da al bina ibasana. So then he made dukhul to Sayyidah Aisha after bina after one year. Uh, does it make sense? Hmm. Did you follow what I said? So, so, so what? What he says, Balkhi, Abu Zaid Balkhi, who passed away 320 seconds. So he says, Rasulullah Islam married her one year before the migration, and she was seven. Hmm. One thing. Wa bana biha bil Madina, and then Rasulullah Islam made bina with her in Madina. So according to me, bina means they moved to live together in Madina. But according to him, uh, he had. You know, whatever he had. And then he says, And then Rasulullah Sallallahu made Dukhul after Bina, after one year after Bina. Hmm. So this could match with what I said. Okay, but with what they said. So um, Dukhul happened training. after one year after Bina. It's and it is in the uh, Sira book of uh, uh, Kitab al-Bad wa Tariq of 
um, Abu Zayd al-Baqi, who passed away at 320 seconds. It's very close to the, mm -hmm. the time of Imam Muhammad and so all of them are scholars. So, Mr. Sheikh, if a natural question comes for us ordinary people is, uh, who does say that bina means sex? So where does this come from? Okay, so, so and uh, just I want to go uh, uh, to quote what brothers uh, 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 said. So from Umdatul Qari, they say, "Qaluhu fa bana biha ay dakhla biha." Bina in here means dakhla. Okay. Qala ibn al Asir al ibtina wal bina al dukhulu bi zoja. Bina and ibtina means to go with the wife. Okay. And then wal aslu fi here and the uh, the root of this word came from kana. <coughs> أن الرجل كان إذا تزوج بامرأة بنا عليها قبة ليدخل بها. The root of this word is because when someone would marry some lady, so they would build some tent so for them to stay together. Okay, and and then he said the same thing. قال الجو الجوهري لا يقال بنا بأهله. So جوهري says to say بنا بأهله is incorrect. The, the narration said it. So you have to say Bana Aliha. So they are taking it from here. Inshallah, we'll just carry on. So then, Al Misbah Al Munir, so he says Bana Ala Ahlihi Dakhala Biha. Okay, Bana means Dakhala. Okay, and then he mentions this, the same uh, root of, of the word. And then he says, So, and after, uh, so the literal meaning is building the tent. Okay, but afterward, it has been used Kunya Bihi Anil Jima. So after that, it was used for the sexual intercourse. And then he says, um, from Tilbatu Talaba, it's one of the uh, Mustalah, Fiqhi Mustalah books of uh, uh, Hanafis. So he says, Bana biha ay hamalaha ila baytihi wa dakhala biha. So then Bana means, according to Imam Nasafi, hamalaha uh, ila baytihi, so uh, husband took his new married wife to his house, wa dakhala biha, and then he made dukhul. Dukhul means, for them to stay in one room with no any uh, other presence. So then he says um, the same thing about Bana uh, bin uh, not biha but aliham. Anyway, and then from Tajul Uruz he says, Arasa bi ahlihi, Arasa, do you know the Arasa is Urs? Uh, the meaning of Urs is wedding. Okay, so that means Bana aliha, means. The bina aleha, so this doesn't match with the previous ones. Yeah. So then he says, what wa fi tahdib bana biha wa kaza arab ar arasa biha. So anyway, so for according to Tajul Uruz, is bana is synonym to arasa taris. You know, aras is mainly the wedding. Okay, as well as zafaf muhtar siha. Okay. So so these are the main quotations. Uh, the main quotations in here. Okay, so these are the main quotations in which actually, uh, according to all of these scholars, uh, bina means duhul. Okay, and uh, from um, uh, Razi, I quoted that bina means zafaf. Zafaf is wedding when, uh, wed, uh, uh, I mean, husband will wed on uh, his uh, wife and she will be brought. Okay, as well as in Taj al uh, uh, bina means arasa, and urs is also wedding. Okay, and the rest of the uh, of the sources, Misbah al Munir and uh, Tilbat al Talaba, uh, uh, bina means dukhul. And also, um, uh, if you can see, uh, so, so there is uh, some disagreement. So, does it mean the bina means zafaf and urs, or does it mean actual dukhul? Okay, so that is one thing. And the second thing is. Uh, uh, for the duhul, I did mention even the last week, for the duhul meaning sex is also not literal meaning. Duhul is to enter, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you remember, I did mention from Hanafi position, for example, let's suppose that I married some lady and duhul took place. And after half an hour after duhul, I will come out saying, I did divorce my wife, okay? And then uh, I will say to Qadi, actually, I didn't have a sexual uh, intercourse, okay? So then Qadi says that she doesn't have to keep any uh, idda. And idda will be after sex 100%. So, dukhul in itself is not literally uh, means that to have sexual intercourse. Okay? So, dukhul, for example, in Hanafi Madhab and Hanbali means to kiss and to, uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to hug. Okay? As well as dukhul means the literal meaning for them to stay in one room. Okay? But what happens there? 
they are free to do whatever they want to. Mm -hmm. And then the most important thing, uh, what Balkhi says, so even let's say that Dukhul means to have a sex, Balkhi did mention that Dukhul actually happened after one year after Bina. So this is authentic, means it never means Dukhul and Bina is not synonyms. Right. Because you know, I, I did quote. There's a gap quote. of one year between... Yeah, no, because yeah. That, that's the... Um, the, the statement uh, means تزوجها mm بمكة -hmm. قبل الهجرة بسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مارد عائشة one year before migration وهي ابنة سبع سنين and said عائشة was seven years old وبنى بها بالمدينة and then رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بناء with سيدة عائشة in مدينة and after that he says ودخل بها بعد البناء بسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دخول after بناء after one year so it does make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it is a bit strange. So, it, it, it's, so, it's, so, so it's not that big issue, you know? So everyone says that Bina is uh, uh, to have sex. So I say even Dukhul doesn't mean sex. Dukhul means for them to um, uh, confirm the, the marriage. Co confirmation is uh, uh, by, uh, but literally is by sex. Okay, by having sex, but uh, duhul will uh, actually because normally when you will make duhul when you're with her uh, on your own, okay. So then um, uh, um, uh, now from now you have to pay the mahar because normally people do not uh, disclose what happened in the duhul. Does make sense? So that's why duhul was kinaya and metaphorically would mean the sex, but not literally. Hmm. Okay, but in here, um, uh, Balkhi actually did mention that even that duhul did happen after one year, after the bina. Okay, so it's, that, that's the uh, main things. And also, just maybe the last thing about the, the issue, because mashallah brothers, they are saying that anyone who doesn't accept that uh, um, Sayyid Aisha was six years old, so he is actually scratching the authenticity of Imam Bukhari, etc. So just uh, some quotations um, uh, from... Uh, Sheikh Nasr al-Albani. So, uh, do you remember? Do you remember the hadith of uh, Imam Bukhari in which uh, Rasulullah, hadith Qudsi, in which it says, Man ada li waliya. It's a very famous hadith. Anyone who uh, hurts one of my awliya, I will declare a war against him. Do you remember that hadith? Okay. So that is narration of Bukhari. Albani said weak. Okay, so then, why, uh, uh, so which one is more important, you know, this or age of Sayyid Aisha? So then, why Albani is not the enemy of religion? Because he's scratching on the authenticity of the Bukhari. That's the first hadith. And the second hadith is, Rasulullah says, there are three people, I will be their, uh, uh, you can say, khosm. Khosm means two, um, uh, in the court, two people when uh, one claim and one defend. What do, they, what do you call them, two people? Uh, defendant and... Yeah, no, but to each other. Oh. So what, one is say, say one is claiming and one is defending yeah, yeah. in court. So Rasulullah Islam says, there are three categories of people, I will be against them in your Qiyamah, to chess off them, you know? Right. Okay, so... Uh, um, uh, so then, Rasulullah Islam mentioned, so one of them is, uh, anyone uh, who have been given something by my name and after that he cheated, and the second person is the one who buys and sells the free man. And the third one is the person who actually um, uh, uh, brings some labor and doesn't pay his payment. So Rasulullah SAW will chase him off. So Imam uh, uh, so, uh, Nasr al-Albani said it is weak again. But hadith is in Bukhari. Third hadith is um, about uh, Rasulullah SAW delaying the uh, tawaf of ziyara, tawaf of hajj, uh, towards the end of the night. Hadith is in Bukhari and uh, Albani said it is weak. Uh, and also, Rasulullah sallam having horse, uh, which name was al luhayf Okay, so hadith is in Bukhari and um, uh, uh, and Albani saying weak. Okay, so uh, saying uh, so, uh, but uh, I don't believe that these brothers say that Albani is the enemy of Islam because he's scratching on the authenticity of the second more reliable hadith. That's one thing. And on top of that, uh, even after the authenticity of the hadith being in Bukhari. It doesn't mean that you have to implement it. For example, do you know hadith is from uh, Zub uh, Zubair, uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair. Rasulullah made Rafa al-Yadain, and then after that, Rasulullah did catch his hand. Hadith is in Bukhari. Imam Malik said, catching the hand is not sunnah. Okay? So even hadith being in Bukhari, it doesn't mean that that's it. It is the end of the dunya, you know? Mm. Or another hadith, which is 
Rasul hadith is in Bukhari. Rasulullah says, No any of you should start fasting one day before uh, Ramadan or two days before Ramadan. Um, uh, Imam Ahmad came back, so hadith is in Bukhari. Imam Ahmad said, It is compulsory to fast one day before uh, uh, in your mushak. But hadith is in Bukhari. Hmm. Uh, or Imam Abu Hanifa saying, Do you know the hadith of Musarrat? It's very famous hadith. So uh, some uh, Sahabi has been cheated. What was the case? So someone sold a cow after keeping the cow for three, four days without milking. So while that uh, person was selling the cow to the Sahabi, so it had, you know, cow had like uh, a lot of milk because it hasn't been milked, okay, for three, four days. And seller did it to cheat, to get a better price. Say, saying, look how much uh, milk does it do. Hmm. Okay, so, so, so Habib bought it and then milked that first day, Marshall, it was good. Second day, it was just a little bit. So he understood that he has been cheated. So then this uh, incident went to Rasulullah, so Rasulullah ordered that person who bought the cow to return back the cow and to give something about three, four kgs of a date. So Abu Hanifa said, uh, you have to return back the cow and you have to refund whatever the uh, cost of the milk, but not 3-4 kgs of, uh, of the date. Okay? As well as another hadith which I, uh, which I mentioned in Bukhari, that uh, Sahabi has been uh, shot, you know, and he was bleeding. No any of the four scholars can accept this hadith, because it means that Rasulullah is allowing us to pray even if there is uh, blood in the body or in the cloth. And Allah says, uh, The shed blood is filth. Did you understand? But hadith is in Bukhari. It hmm. uh, doesn't make sense. So, um, uh, if uh, uh, scratching the authenticity of Bukhari is uh, any, being enemy of Islam, so then there is Albani. But if um, not accepting the content of the hadith of Bukhari means being enemy of Islam, so then that is Malik, that is Ahmad, and that is all of four, and that is Abu Hanifa, call them whatever they, you, you do call them, you know. So it is not that easy case, you know. It is not that easy case just because of some hadith being in Bukhari and you are not uh, um, accepting, so you become enemy of uh, Islam. So it is just a bit uh, childish statement, actually. Mm -hmm. So that is all maybe for... And, uh, and uh, I'm not willing to come back to this matter no more because now it will become like internet forum and mm. I do not get engaged into the forum because uh, the people who get engaged into the forums is just people, kids, you know, uh, yeah, whose yeah. father brought a gift in their uh, birthday, six years uh, of birthday, uh, which is some, uh, in, uh, like a gift called laptop. There is internet connection, so then they go to uh, <laughs> to debate. I'm not uh, ready to debate with that type of uh, people. No, I say, um, uh, leave this matter for your uncles, please. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Exactly.